If it works. Mm -hmm. We'll see. Sounds good. Alright. Alright. Hello, everyone. It is Sunday night, and we are continuing with the Super Mario RPG uh, marathon, or marathon yeah. run within the Paper Mario Marathon because it's for Origami King, which comes out on Friday. So, Andrew, how has your day been? Long, yeah? strong, known to get the friction on. Oh, what happened? Uh, it's just been a long day. Wait. Oh, yeah. Nothing particularly bad, just long. Mm, yeah, yeah. I feel it. I This is like the first day I've been able to really rest since this marathon happened, because I try and at least rest on Sundays to keep a, a generally uh, more healthy schedule, especially considering I've been putting a lot of work into this. Um, and we are only going like three hours on this one, so it won't be quite as quote-unquote grueling. It's a little harsh for how I feel about it, but should be able to handle it. I'm gonna take tomorrow off, and I'm thinking either, I'm thinking probably Wednesday off, um, so that we, cause it's just gonna be weird to schedule it around Dynamite. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Speaking of Dynamite, do you have any wrestling news, Andrew? Um, well, you remember how previously we discussed how WWE wrestler Lana mm -hmm. said that both of her parents had been diagnosed with COVID. Oh, yeah. Uh, turns out it's more than just her parents who were diagnosed. Oh, no. And it throws a lot of fantasy booking that fans have been doing the past couple of weeks straight out the door. Yeah. Um, Rusev, mm -hmm. a.k.a. Miro, who a lot of fans were hoping would get picked up by AEW now, has... Clint, or said that he has been diagnosed with COVID now. Oh no. Yeah. I hope he'll so, be okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, you hope that of anybody diagnosed, but... Well, certainly. And honestly, yeah, it, it feels a little redundant, but pretty much every time I hear it, that's my first thought is like, I just hope, hope they pull through something. Yeah. <sighs> Did uh, oh, did Burger King for dinner and man, things were going wild at the Burger King. Uh, I'm pretty sure their soda fountain was down because when I drove up to the drive-through window, uh, while wearing my mask, 
And most of them were wearing masks. Not all right, but they were at least trying. Uh, but the soda fountain must have been down because they were just back there pouring large drinks uh, with just two liter sodas. So. Jesus. Yeah, it, it had like that pizza party vibe of uh, just the, the two liter soda. It's open, it's going a little bit flat every few minutes. Yeah. It was a. Uh, it, it looked like a shit show. To be to be frank. Uh, yeah, it sounds like it was a shit show. Yeah, um, I mostly I mostly went just because they have um, they sent us so many coupons and the coupons are are pretty solid, uh, mm -hmm. as far as what they offer, but uh, they have a new item, mini shakes. It's a dollar for a nine ounce milkshake, which is a pretty good deal, and honestly, as an adult, that's yeah. about as much milkshake as I can really handle before it's too much sugar. Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's one that gets me is sugar, like, it can be a lot. Yeah, um, and you can have a l little, like, it's not too bad, but man, the the tolerance for it, like, you get this, the sticky mouth and you just feel kind of, kind of gross. And, yeah, um... Sets my teeth on edge these days to drink, to like chew sweet food. Oh yeah? Like I can't even chew it. Just too much. Yeah. Oh yeah, I get uh, the like, I get the sense of teeth too if it's anything like cold. I can hardly handle like a, a popsicle or ice cream bar or whatever. Because my molar is just, it's just an ache. I never chewed ice cream or popsicles in the first place mm. I always did the thing where I would like take a bite off it with my front teeth and then just press it against the roof of my mouth oh yeah a lot of them are soft enough that you can do that too um at, at least as far as ice cream bars go but like a popsicle it's yeah just, you ugh. can do it with a popsicle as long as it's uh not too frozen yeah if it's frozen hard enough then it's gonna hurt but Oh sure, I my thing is like um, as the McElroy brothers said, because they were talking about popsicles and like I haven't had a popsicle since I was an adult, and Griffin was just like, yeah, it's just frozen juice. So do you drink a glass of juice as an adult? Well, it's more like a frozen Gatorade, and the problem with that is if you, it's actually a syrup. Like, mm -hmm. it's not a juice; it's a syrup. Um, yeah, it's like a very cheap juice, like a Hawaiian punch or something. No, 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 I mean, it's thick, because if you actually, like, buy one of those uh, kits for, like, the little mold for freezing orange juice or whatever into a popsicle, mm -hmm. um, and you pour something like a soda or a Gatorade or anything like that into it, mm. um, the second you take it out and just go... <sighs> one time you have just a cube of ice because you've sucked out all the flavor yeah um, yeah actually like, that it, does happen pretty much any time I've tried that or if you use a natural juice it always has the really like big crystals that are just kind of shrapnel yeah that's because you have to make it into a syrup first and that's usually by just adding like corn syrup to thicken it or reducing it down which burns it so mm. yeah there's no wait a popsicle is not just frozen juice like you would have said that's true um, I just can't I can't handle them they're just it's too sweet <sighs> although yeah. earlier I got some like bottled um, sweet tea that Corey meant to take with him uh, but he forgot which happens pretty much every time he goes out, but that's fine. So uh, I tried a little mixed with this really thick um, lemonade that I made from scratch, and like it, it was perfect. The like tartness uh, perfectly balanced out the sweet tea flavor. It was it was a solid solid drink. It's called a Arnold Palmer. 
Well, yeah. It was an Arnold Palmer, but it was specifically pre-packaged tea, uh, homemade lemonade. Something about that mix really worked out. Uh, it's not my thing. Uh, as far as tea goes, hmm? um, if I'm buying pre-made tea, the only pre-made tea I like is Harris Teeter's Diet Sweet Tea. Hmm. Otherwise, I don't really like tea. Play like, it's just not for me. You know what my mom used to do? I was telling Coco this earlier. She would make sun tea, which is just a big old glass pitcher, the one with like the little spigot on the side. Um, mm -hmm. She'd fill it up with cold water and a bunch of like Lipton tea bags and a bunch of sugar and just let it sit in the sun and slowly steep like a, like a slow cook for mm -hmm. just the whole day out in the sun during the summer. And that... You know, it wasn't quite as sweet as, like, the sweet tea down here, but, like, it was it was a wonderful summer treat. Yeah. Um, it was a comedian. I think it was... I think it was David Cross. Talked about, um... If you go to a restaurant outside of the South and order a sweet tea... Mm. They bring you a cold iced tea that has not been sweetened in sugar packets. Yeah, which doesn't work, guys. You gotta you gotta dissolve them in the hot tea, or and it has to be like all day, like that sun tea. And when I... it is disgusting to try because you just get. I don't know if you were the kind of kid who put sugar on their Cheerios growing up. I tried it a couple times with cornflakes. It always it, it always just pooled on the bottom and turned gray. Yeah, and you had milky sugar. Yeah. And like as a kid, you're just like, okay, and you fucking spoon it into your face, and then. Oh yeah, when I was like, like a little little kid, me and my older sibling, we just make sugar water. That that was it. Just granulated sugar and water makes it till it dissolves. It was, it was disgusting. <laughs> Yeah, um, I did that, mm. and recently I tried it again, like, yeah, I used to love that as a kid, so I thought, I'll try it again, and, uh, it was like when I was, like, 28 or something, mm -hmm. Bruh, that sugar, oof, that will put you in a fucking coma. Yeah. Like, you're just chilling, trying to enjoy your day, and then next thing you know, you took a bite of pure milky sugar. Wait, what the... Did I get rid of the symbols? I gotta check my equipment, because Malo is really not having a good time down underwater. Um, when I worked at Starbucks, sometimes people would ask for honey in their iced tea, and uh -huh. that that just does not work out. We'd, put, we'd try and do whatever we could, put, like, some hot hot uh water in with the sugar or the honey to like melt it down a little bit but it would always just clump up at the bottom and it'd just be a unsweetened tea with a big old glob of honey at the bottom of it yeah it doesn't work out <laughs> like yeah there's some things you just cannot uh replicate in a manner and that is one of them um it just doesn't work yeah. It has to be a part of the hot process, or you're just going to waste your time. Oh, yeah. But if you do it correctly, man, some honey. If you ever have a sore throat, folks, you know, don't don't talk. Definitely don't whisper, because then your vocal folds are rubbing together even more, so it'll just do more harm. But uh, what you got to do is get some black tea with some raw honey. The black tea will help with the inflammation. The raw honey, it's like an antibacterial. It's very soothing, and the whole thing just like it'll clear you up. One, maybe two cups, you should be good. I haven't tried that, but um, hard candies also do the job. It's pretty good. I the things I'd say to avoid for the most part are like lozenges or the throat sprays, because in reality most of them are just uh, they're just an uh, an analgesic. Right? That's the yeah. term? Yeah, where they're just make numbing your throat so that you don't feel it, but it's not helping your throat exactly. If you do go with a lozenge, 
I would say go with uh, these fishermen's friends. I use these very rarely because, like I said, it's you want to use them as little as possible. But uh, they taste like death. It's it's just pure medicine. There's no sugary anything to it, and they're they're effective. They'll do it, but they're gonna clear out your sinuses. Let me tell you. Mm-hmm. If you need to clear your sinuses, there are two things that work, mm -hmm. 100%. And that is, you either go with capsaicin or mint. Mm-hmm. So it One honestly, the, the best thing to clear out your sinuses I've ever had, just the tiniest pinch of cayenne pepper. It's not gonna feel great, but just sniff a tiny pinch of cayenne pepper. And it will it will clear those sinuses out real good. That or just a spoonful of hot sauce straight. Oof. Yep. The hotter you can handle, the better. Especially if it's a uh, hot sauce with something like uh, gi uh not ginger, but um, horseradish. Mm. A nice aromatic heat. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Horseradish would actually... Uh, or wasabi. I did one time as a dare. Well, that's horseradish here in the United States. Exactly. We don't get, we At, don't get true wasabi. One time on a dare, I had gotten sushi with some co-workers at a job mm -hmm. a while ago, and there was just that glob of wasabi, and uh, <laughs> what we would do is uh, every now and then when somebody was holding something that wasn't necessarily food we would just say to each other hey food challenge <laughs> and you basically you just have to do it so i picked up the wasabi so that i could get like a piece of ginger out from under it <laughs> and one of them was like hey food challenge and i was like oh no so i went and i first off i took a little nibble because i hadn't had wasabi in a while so i was like all right, I gotta remember what it tastes like so that I know at least what to expect. And ooh, even that tiny nibble was already potent. So, uh, yeah, put the whole glob in my mouth. Um, yeah, I I could breathe real easy. That like that like blasted my nose hairs off. It was so so spicy. And that's what it do. Um, Makes me think of. Uh, what was, um, there was that video where Patrick Cloud and the other guy from All Def Digital were eating sushi. <laughs> and the other guy, yeah. You, yeah, you describe it. Uh, so it's Tahir Moore and Patrick Cloud, and they're eating, I think, ramen or sushi. Yeah, one. some kind of Japanese and, uh, food. And, uh, Tahir had never had wasabi, and so he puts, like, an unreasonably large glob on his sushi as uh patrick is this a good amount and patrick looks over sees that tahir is still looking at his food looks dead into the camera like you know from the look on his face no this is not a reasonable <laughs> amount and then he's like yeah that's good <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, man. Let's try it. I mean, it's a little spicy, but give it a shot. And so he eats this, like, wad of fucking sushi with fucking wasabi all the fuck over it. Yeah. And then, uh... Oh, there's a just loses here. fucking mind. And, like, Patrick waits about three chews, like, past the point of no return. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie, that was a lot of wasabi. <laughs> it was... A lot. And let me tell you, I, I have a unique experience with that because I can relate. Ooh. It's such a good bit. And Patrick just looks like directly at the camera. It looks back at him. It's like, no, it's fine. <laughs> God, that's such Patrick Cloud is funny as shit. Yeah, He's I... One of my favorite people to follow on Instagram. He's one of the few, like, genuinely funny people, because as a lot of folks know, uh, comedy on Instagram, kind of lacking in a lot of spots, but if you follow Patrick Cloud, he mostly does commentaries on little viral videos people send to him, and he'll just God, do, like, a side-by-side, -side, and it's like, oh, man, him just riffing on it. <laughs> what was the God. one thing he said? It was like, 
It was like some Karen shit going on before the Karen stuff, and he started it with just like, what in the white woman? <laughs> yeah, what in the white world of white women? <laughs> oh, man. So, like, God, he has, like, the best fucking... Um... God. Mm. I'm like... He's like... I'm trying to think of anybody to compare him to, but... Like... The first person that comes to mind is someone like, um, almost like a Mitch Hedberg or a Steven Wright. Oh, yeah. He's good with a quick one-liner, and then he'll just hit you with, like, four more one-liners oh, on um, the same subject. Uh, uh, oh, shit, I can't remember the, his first name, but Mooney, the stand-up who used to be on the Chappelle show back in the day. Oh, Paul. Paul Mooney, yeah, like, it's, Patrick gives me kind of a Paul Mooney vibe, you know, it's that kind of chill, like, not holding shit back, but, like, real smooth kind of humor. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's a lot, he, he's very similar in, um, to that Paul Mooney bit where Paul would sit at, like, a, like, he was lampooning, uh, like, different kinds of TV shows. Hmm. So one of the shows was him um, doing, like, so-and-so at the movies, and they would review movies or movie news. Hmm. And he... It's a Chappelle show bit. And the one bit was... Uh, oh, how'd it go? Uh, they talked about... You know, just Google it, because it's <laughs> really good, and I can't, like... It's one of those things where you remember it being really fucking funny and biting, yeah. but you can't remember shit about it later. I mean, so much of the Chappelle show was, like, fantastic, and it it makes it pretty disappointing what he ended up doing with his comedy career once he came back. What, what was really fucking fascinating about Chappelle show is how predictive it was. Like, oh, yeah. He predicted so much happening that at the time you watch you're like that's ridiculous that could never happen and then it fucking did yeah he came um, up with trading spouses basically back a year before the show actually came out which shocked me because like when i saw it i saw it as a rerun well after the show had been out so i was like oh ha, huh, he's parodying that i'm like it's a little exaggerated but that's pretty much how it goes and then like yeah. finding out Fine, later yeah, yeah. that's yeah. That's so clever. God damn it. Dave Chappelle, why couldn't you have stayed cool? Another thing he predicted? CBD. Oh? He predicted CBD. Really? Um, yeah. What? Which one was that? You remember O'Doul's? The alcoholic beer? Yeah, the non-alcoholic beer, that is. Right. They had O'Dweeds. Oh, <laughs> And that's what it was. Um, like, there's this guy in his car smoking, and a cop comes up to him and is like, Don't worry, it's old dweeds, man. And the cop's like, Can I get a hit of that? And he takes like a few puffs, it's like, It tastes like the chronic, but it's not. <laughs> and then the guy lifts up the, uh, picks up a zip and he's like, Oops, wrong bug, man. And then drives off, leaving the cop holding the joint. You know what? You know what I always loved? There was this one series of sketches he had on an episode where he was talking about there was an old like com set of commercials McDonald's did where they were like rallying around this guy getting a job at McDonald's and like getting himself out in the world and like working for himself. And so they parodied that with Whack Arnold's and mm -hmm. it's just like as it goes on it just gets more and more realistic as to what working at McDonald's actually is like. And it's ooh it's it's brutal, but it's it's real funny. That's the thing, he predicted so much, like Um You could argue that he predicted Candace Owens in that first oh, episode. Yeah. It's I mean, yeah, if She's not that extreme, but I mean she did apologize for Hitler and say Hitler wasn't that bad. Yeah, so... I'm not making that up. Oh, no. I, I know all about Candace Owens. It's, uh... Ooh. She's just, she just really doesn't care. 
as long as it makes her like popular because she used to be very left-leaning and then she realized that she would have a better time uh postulating pundit being a pundit Kissing ass. yeah for the right wing Mm-hmm. oh boy it's she said some ridiculous things but you know what let's let's keep things we don't have to be apolitical because lord knows there's no way we could do that at this point but uh let's let's try and keep things a little more uh happy you got any you got any twitter memes andrew oh uh, no but i did talk did we talk on stream about the messages i got from that guy or was that off stream you know i don't I don't remember. No, you know I think I'm, about, I'm pretty right? sure we were on stream, right? Uh, I can't remember. Because I definitely remember you talking about him. I just can't remember at what point in the night it was. God, if anybody watching was here yesterday when we talked about uh, the guy with the tattoo game. Yeah. And honestly, if you're listening, feel free to say hi in the chat or whatever. You know, we like to respond and have a conversation with you guys as much as we're having a conversation with each other and uh um, you know take the time we're gonna be playing for for quite a bit another probably two and a half hours so did you see the uh, <laughs> did you see the fucking messages i sent y'all last night uh, a little over a year ago i received this dm Every day since, I've lived in fear <laughs> and it's a dm from ikea usa that just says Meatball. Meatball. Or uh, from Heresy Labs. <laughs> Somebody remixed uh, Blue Monday by New Order <laughs> to coincide with a Nazi getting knocked the fuck out. Yeah, there were uh, in the comments for that. There was another oh, one. God, there's so many good ones. Yeah. Oh, ooh, okay. I'm I'm out of the boss um, fight. Let me see if I can get back to a back to an inn. God. There were a lot of really good ones. I um, wish someone would use more of the, uh, more clips, you know? Because, like, it's good, but I'd like to see, like, a full mashup of just as many clips as they can find. So you're saying we should punch more Nazis on camera? Oh. Oh, absolutely. On camera, off camera. In your dreams and in reality. Let it be. Oh, man. Punch a Nazi. Do your part. I um, want you to punch a Nazi. Captain America can do it. So can you it. Um, Man, I already have five stars. I don't, I don't know if I'm even going to need another, like, what, eight hours on it. I mean, you're about to hit some of the hardest boss battles back to back. Mm, okay. Like... Let me, the the let me boss see. on the ship is fairly easy, but I'm right. telling you, as soon as you're done, do not continue the story before you've had a chance to rest and save. Oh yeah, well I'm I'm heading to rest right now, so uh, uh, hopefully I can get back to a hotel. Let's see, dry uh, bones. Oh, that's right, I can, you can't kill the dry bones. You have to use the pure water. Shit. Also, also. Here's the thing. Mm -hmm. People can uh, call it weird, but I. It's a thing. Mm -hmm. Grilled cheese. Don't use butter. Use mayonnaise on the outside of your sandwich. Oh, hell yeah. It's so much better. God damn it. I keep meaning to use the uh, pure water and I'm. Fuck it up. But yeah, mayonnaise. It's solid. It, it gives it. A much more golden crust. You don't have to wait for your butter to thaw out. It's overall, it's more convenient. It has a better result. Oh, also. It sounds. I get it. It sounds weird. I understand that. I fully get that. It sounds fucking nuts. But just trust us. Yeah, this ain't mayo in a cake, you know, like they did back in the 50s. Because, oh, it's got milk and eggs. And it's like, yeah, but it also has vinegar. So, uh. Maybe not. Well, that's not. So, well, I mean, so does a red velvet cake. So. I mean, yeah. Um, so I'm not as against that idea as um you think, but um 
as for grilled cheese, and not a thick like glob it on layer. You want to get huh. it like crust to crust. Yeah, coverage, you want to see it. You want to see the texture of the bread through it still. And if you've got one, put it in a griddle. God, I wish. What I'll do sometimes Wait. is I'll do the Elton Brown classic method of uh, heating up two pans and just sandwiching it between those. That could work, but I don't go that route. What I do, we inherited a massive griddle. Mm. Uh, like, I looked up the price on this thing, and I love it so much, I would pay full price for a new one if this one died. Wow. How, and it's uh, in the triple digits. <laughs> I was gonna say, yeah, so it's like a full, like, sandwich griddle? Oh, you could cook more than a sandwich. In well, this I mean, like, san like, sandwich style, where it has, like, a surface the on top, top surface. Plate, yeah. yeah. Like, it sandwiches whatever you put in it. Yeah. So he, It is. Another massive. tip. To, so, uh, perfect grilled cheese, you use a hearty bread. You use the mayonnaise, spread it thin, spread it all the way across. And then you use grated cheese. Not pre-grated, grated by hand. That pre-grated's covered in potato starch, so it won't melt correctly. You sprinkle that in, and if you're partial to mustard, just a little thin... Thin spread of mustard on the inside really, really kicks it up. Gives it a little bit more so, of a bite. Cuisinart Griddler Deluxe mm -hmm. at Bed Bath & Beyond, $160. Oh my god. No digital readout. None, I don't feel like it really needs that. Well, That's yeah. just complicating things. Uh, get just a simple two-dial front. Um, it's each dial controls which plate, so the bottom plate and upper plate. And just mm -hmm. set both to, you know, a little around 325, 350, somewhere around there. And just wait till it's hot. Put the sandwich in. Press it down. Leave it for about 30 seconds. Flip it. Do it again. You think, well, why do I have to flip it if it's in a griddle? Just trust me convection still matters and the way heat mm. moves is from bottom to top so that's right uh, there still there uh, are there are can... three types of heat and if you use them all correctly then you can cook pretty much anything exactly the way you uh, want to so start with that and then uh flip it but you can use one of those to cook steaks you can use one to cook quesadilla the best fucking quesadillas um just wrap it in aluminum foil first pop it in flip it over it's amazing mm -hmm. ah shit uh so heading back to town to uh you found out all those weird toads weren't toads well i gathered that but i didn't think they'd attack me as soon as i walked into town if you don't give them what they want, they attack the townspeople. Shit. No. They'll keep tickling them. No. Get serious. So, so someone sharing copaganda, mm -hmm. uh, talking about. This little boy started crying when he saw Detroit police officers in his neighborhood. The four-year-old was afraid they would hurt him. The officers took time to create a bond with Little Mason and then bought all the kids snacks. Fucking copaganda. Bullshit. Eh? But somebody pointed out, uh, if you zoom in on the picture, the cop in the background has his hand on the gun while talking to two, like, tiny children. Yeah. Fucking Ridiculous. Cops. Ridiculous. Also, if I see that fucking Trump ad where someone calls 911 and it's like a burning 911 office, like, the current wait time is five days. Like, fuck off. Yeah, that definitely may endears us to you. Hey, buddy, maybe pay attention to how the majority of the country was agreeing with the protests. And fucking maybe. Read the room. Yeah, read the goddamn room and understand that. You're angering people, but guess what? You need those people to vote for you, dumbass. And the people that, you know, that is uh, reaching are... You have to give the star to them, but you just have to. I have to? 
Yeah. Damn, I was hoping I could keep going and that they'd eventually get tired. Um. Okay. But, but uh. Fucking. The kind of person that does appeal to is. already a coward. And already hiding behind an AK 47 because they're afraid of a nebulous bad guy coming to steal their stuff and they need that gun to protect their family despite the fact that you know studies show you're more likely to kill your family than any invader um you may have to leave town to go to the inn because that right. guy is hard well I saved at least um, uh Mary Moore has an inn yeah in I think Trump is trying to lose, but of course we'll claim it was all rigged against me. Well, see, if he were trying to lose, that doesn't work in his favor because the minute he's not defended by William Barr and all that shit is the minute he's uh, subject to actual legal ramifications for everything he's fucking done. Mm -hmm. uh, and if because he, he's no longer the president... And the argument has been that the president is immune from this kind of shit. Which, first of all, no. No. But uh, second of all, you don't get to play that game. Like, that's not how this shit works. And so the minute he's not got that on his side, that's why he jokes. And he calls it, oh, I'm just joking, I'm joking. When he sits shit like... Maybe I'll run for another three terms. Maybe I'll run for four terms, five terms, 50 years, you know, because he knows if he starts seeding that with a little joke, it's just a joke. Uh -huh. It's not a joke because that sets the fucking precedent of, oh, you know, it's just a joke, but unless you, it's that, oh, we could be doing this. Um, haha, <laughs> just kidding. Unless it's the that of politics. Yeah. And he knows that he can do that and resign a week before Biden takes office and have Pence pardon him. Doesn't work. Uh, no, there would be time because the it's, it's a process. That well, here's why through. it doesn't work. First, he has to be found guilty of the crimes. Mm. And you can't be pardoned for that if you're not guilty. So they would have to have him go through the court trial and all that here's the second problem with that wait uh for just the, a second uh wh where do i go can't now? Part you go uh up to the west, to the west. side of town to the west side of town okay yeah west side of town not, no, no no you don't leave town yeah no no sorry i was i had already left before uh i asked west side the oh west there's a side of town and you'll, there's a path yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So uh, the second reason that it doesn't work um, is that the president can only pardon you for federal crimes. If a lot of what he's being investigated for right now in New York are not federal crimes, and he has Pence would not have the authority to pardon him uh, at that point. So. Whoa. The idea of Pence uh, pardoning him at all is only effective at the point at which he uh, is found guilty of federal crimes. And the fact that he's not being punished for them already after being found guilty. Yeah. Yeah, so. Jesus, this boss is terrifying looking. Uh-huh. It looks and like you... it looks like something out of like um uh, like an, a, one of those '90s indie comics, like uh, what was it like Thrack or something? Oh, you could have just stopped like after the fourth word of that sentence. That I don't really think Trump has thought. Like yeah, you didn't you didn't need the this part for like you could have just cut that last two words off. Trump doesn't think. <laughs> Oh yeah, well He's that's the thing, idiot. he didn't even want to win the presidency, the whole thing was a publicity stunt for him and to get a better deal. Up. Yeah. He, he fucked up and too much came to light, he was like, oh shit, I need to be president. 
oh. to avoid prison. Oh, oh, the people oh, talk God. about how there's so it's so gonna, much happening over here. You have the psychopath ability to like see what someone's HP is. Yes, I do. Uh, Malo has that, right? I would, I would check that if I were psychopath. you. Psychopath. Uh, I mean, they both can be the same. Uh. Yeah. Ten seventy. Jesus. Uh huh. And he's he's a big old beef slapper. Yeah, basically, and he can do some damage with those spears. I'm glad that the pick me ups uh, fully heal you too, because there's a lot of games where you yeah. don't. Yeah. Like don't. a ten percent. Yeah. Uh, shocker. Yeah. That's not what I'm. Ah, damn it. I'm still not quite used to this system where you have to use the button that takes you over there every time you use that menu. So, Christopher Titus is pointing out that COVID has a 13.5% mortality rate because people are saying there's only a 1% mortality rate. That's still, with a population the size of the United States, millions of people. Yeah, 3 million. Like, yeah. And at 13.5%, that's millions more. And so somebody in the comments is like, well, how would you deal with sending the kids back to school? I wouldn't. Um, you don't. Yeah. You don't send them back. Like, duh. Simple. Like, Do you think you poison fucking... gas will work on this guy? I was reading an article in The Atlantic about how Trump has authoritarian characteristics, but he's too lazy to actually do the work needed to become a dictator. Mm. No, he's trying. Um, the problem is, there are checks and balances that are holding him back, and he doesn't have the um, support to pull it off, specifically in Congress, and surprisingly in the Supreme Court. Yeah, they've being... voted against him quite a few times. Yeah, and they the reason being, they know that, you know, if they try to give it to him now, they're fucked later, because they're all about to die off, and the generation coming in behind them is far more left-leaning than they are, mm. and far more left-leaning than it, previous generations they've had to deal with. And the chances that and it's their own fucking fault because they fucking booted us all the way down the road and then wondered why we don't like getting booted down the road. Um, yep. So it's their own fault for pushing us this hard. But um, and, and that's not to say there aren't right leaning millennials and Zoomers. Yeah. But there are far fewer than there are older generations uh, there's a common meme that goes uh, uh, as I, I was always told that I'd get more conservative as I got older and I've just gotten more and more leftist yeah and because true. the the idea is that the more money you get the more conservative you get so in the past when you grew older you would make more money and then you would become more conservative but as things have gone, everybody's just getting poorer and poorer. Yep. Um, oh, slightly interesting wrestling news. Um, there will not be a women's evolution 2, after all. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> so, what clearly happened was there. All we had to go on was there was rumors that there would be. A big event after summer. Hmm. Uh. Fuck. They're all down. Oh, this is going terribly for me. <laughs> oh god, I he split up again. So. I told you so. Oh, fuck. Uh. <laughs> uh. So. This is brutal. Kids are supposed to do this. I mean, I did it. Oh yeah. Sorry. RVP. RVP ham. RVP ham, uh, uh, the hyperlinks are shut off for everybody who isn't a mod. It, not anything specifically for you, just for safety, because yeah. we don't really have the time to uh, vet every article or link before it goes through to make sure that it's okay. So. Yeah. And um, 
So WWE had announced, oh, we're going to have this uh, big event after this. And everyone's like, oh, Women's Evolution 2. No. <laughs> so instead, to make up for it, they're having Women's Evolution Week. Mm. This week on social media. Oh yeah, we've seen John Oliver's thing on WWE. Yeah, it doesn't even go close to covering the. Oh like, yeah, we, problems. We've been aware of it for a long time. Like that's a brief <laughs> overview, but like it it goes so deep and it has for decades. Things are better it, with AEW. AEW is a much better company, um, and they're only about a it, year it old. It still has some work, but it's a lot better. It's a um, lot better. There's uh oh shit um documentary series that came out a couple weeks ago called Dark Side of the Ring. Oh, and man. I haven't watched it. Each episode focused on a different story, and one was the story of um, Owen Hart and how he passed. Yeah. And it, like, once you hear the story, you're like, holy shit, this was a murder by negligence. Mm -hmm. Like, he is completely like wwe is completely at fault for this um they you so his the way he died was he was at a an event and this was when he was the blue uh blue falcon or something like that hmm. what was his gimmick at the time? uh i don't recall it was something god it was blue something uh, blue blazer mm. the blue blazer and he would be lowered to the ring on the harness uh, Thing did that you know uh, and uh, Shawn Michaels later did it for one entrance but uh, the he his harness snapped and he fell to his death from high above the ring and just landed yeah. in the ring. Turns out they had used a carabiner that was only rated to six pounds. Oh god. That is so, oh my god. I mean, yeah, clearly it was unsafe. He died. But yeah. My god. Yeah. Uh because it was quicker and cheaper. I'm sure they're also going to, at some point, address um, address Chris Benoit and his uh, his. Oh, they already did. And oh, they've already gotten that. He was the first episode, uh, and oh, Mick Foley has a cameo page now. Speaking Ooh. of, I'm scrolling Twitter now. Shit, how much is it? Your birthday's oh, God, coming up. Very... <laughs> huh? Your birthday's yeah. coming up. <laughs> God, uh, no, it's not. That he, it, it's worth them. He's worth the amount he's asking, but it's not. Uh, I couldn't. How much? Uh, $75. Yikes. I was think I was. Oh, man. If it was like 50 I would get you that for your birthday, but that's, that's a little more than I can spend right now. Yeah, I wouldn't want you to anyway. Alright, well. Um, I, I, I want to, at least, so it's a thought that counts, I guess. <laughs> My rule of thumb is you don't spend more than $25 on a person's birthday present unless you're family. That's and a, even then, that's a good, it's uh, gotta be pretty thing. close. Uh, um, shit, what do I need? Maple syrup, that's the one. Uh, like, for a friend, 25 is a good limit. Okay. I still gotta figure also, it out since you haven't. You just de decidedly don't want that beach ball. I mean, the beach ball is pretty nice. Yeah. But, uh. God. Um. Also, phrase rule of thumb is really fucked up in origin. Yes. Um. Oh, I've 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 heard like multiple versions of it, but like. None of them were the, good. The real one uh, is at a time it was at one point perfectly legal to beat your wife on the courthouse steps. Yikes! 
but you could only you had to use like a rod or a stick, but it could be no thicker or like no wider than your thumb. Okay. Have you heard the radioactive rule of thumb? Uh, if you're close enough to touch something that's radioactive with your thumb, you're too fucking close. Kind of. So you know the Vault Boy from Fallout, how he's always doing the thumbs up, right? Um, yeah. the reason is because back in the nuclear days, the 50s, the duck and cover days, uh, uh -huh. the rule was if a nuclear bomb goes off and you hold your arm out and put your thumb in between you and them, if the mushroom cloud is bigger than your thumb, you're too close. Good luck getting away from it then. Oh like... yeah, no, you're, it's definitely too late at that point, but it's just to let you know, like, yeah, you're getting hit by fallout of some kind. Yeah. I mean, if you survive, you should assume you're probably too close and need to get emergency medical treatment. Yeah, you can't just hide in a fridge like Indiana Jones. Yeah, we're not afraid to talk about fucked up shit, because that's, yeah. that's the only way to make things better. Yeah, as, um, uh, as Billy West always said, uh, if you don't laugh, you cry, so... And it's always you, better to address it with whatever tact we have. Yeah. And acting like it's not there does nothing. Um, you know, the one subject we wouldn't speak on because of timing was speaking out. Mm. So, yeah. Now it's just because it was such a fucked up, like, thing going on and there was not enough. Like, we still won't talk about it simply because, in many cases, uh, there's no follow-up. We just have accusations. But for people like uh, Joey Ryan, where, you know, shit's hit fan, and, you know, Impact Wrestling is saying, ah, oh, he's probably never coming back. We fired him, but he, it's not a situation any of us are ever going to have to worry about whether or not to hire him again or not. Mm -hmm. Or, uh, uh, Sammy Guevara, who went to training, you know, will discuss the. I'm following the Wrestle Talk rules, which is they will not discuss it unless the person accused, a company they work for, or the police discuss it publicly and make a statement. That's fair, because all. If it's all allegations, like, there's no way. It, like, we can have all the evidence we need, but unfortunately we're not a court of law. We can't really say whether or not there's the evidence to back that up. And if things do come out, like, I mean, we will we will not be quiet about which people deserve admonishment for their actions. But as, it's, as it stands now, we'll address the fact that it does exist. And we are talking about it privately to keep up with it um, to see if see how it develops but for the time being there's just we're, there's not enough information although generally yeah. we're gonna probably side with the victims yeah yeah i mean the so the like the one person that's got me and iggy like the most on edge in all this we can't find like so there was one person who made an accusation against him, and uh, then an account that shared the accusation got taken down for um, unknown reasons, and the person who started the movement said, uh, they're not on our side, they are you know, out to push their own uh, agenda. Mm. So again, I were like, well, eh? It's hard, it's and a real hard one to say. Because yeah, we just don't and... have enough information, and like, it, it it feels really shitty to try and like look at it with a fine tooth comb of like, could this have been faked? How yeah. can we trust this source? It's like, it feels really shitty to do that, but at the same time, it's like, the the evidence we do have is stuff that isn't really um isn't really uh. Solid. What's what's the word? It, like peer reviewed, but for journalism. Um, credible. I guess? Yeah, I, I suppose it, is it backed up? And yeah. in general, we've like we've only got one accuser. 
Yeah. Which if we get if we get you. other evidence and things like absolutely, but as it stands, we're not sure. And as it is, eh, the company that is hiring them has been has been very, pretty upfront about everybody else. Yeah. So if and they're not saying about them, about firing them, or yeah. at least if not firing them, they didn't get away with anything. Like they don't go unpunished. Yeah. So, um, so the wait, fact that what do I, not... where do I go now? I got the star back. Hmm. Um, let's see. Seaside town. Talk. Did you talk to the mayor? Oh, I haven't yet. Yep, yep, yep. Got to go back and do that. Uh, in here, maybe. Ah. Oh, but yep. It, okay. Here we go. Yeah, it's just one of those things where the people involved, you know, have ma the the bosses involved have made the right decisions so far. Mm -hmm. So we trust their judgment. But they also haven't made a statement on that particular person. So we're kind of like... Mm, uncomfortable, you know. Yeah. We wish you would at least say... One way or the other. Whether, you know, the person is... You know, on thin ice, or... Um, Just at anything. Something. Huh? Just anything, you know, like yeah. some kind of address to it. Yeah, it's yeah. very uncomfortable that they're not saying anything and that the talent is still being used. So, it's just... Eh, oh. It's very, eh. This beetle box situation sounds like pure grinding. Um, I think it's the fucking... Um, Ooh, oh, there's some game. good... They're selling some good shit. See, I think show. it's the thing where you're running up and down that hill with booster. Mm -hmm. I think it's that is how you get the beetles. I mean, it's it's fine. I'm I'm pretty set on that, but uh, like I think I should be good with money for a while. Uh, shit. Oh, I just bought, I just bought some stuff. Whoops. Um, that's fine. That's fine. I should be okay. Uh, let's see. Let me go to the items. Right or not? Oh, armor. Okay, that's. I also need some armor. Let's see. <laughs> what you got? So, uh, I'm playing Yakuza Zero again, mm -hmm. and there's a point where a, uh, one of the side stories is this cop will stop you and uh, ask you to show him something you're carrying to determine whether you're a threat or not. Right. I'm like, normally you show them like an energy drink or a pack of tissues or something. And I'm like, I have a, a shotgun. Yeah. I have, I have one, two, three, four, four shotguns. Uh, three katana, like legit katana. Four katana, I'm sorry. A knife rubbed with chili pepper. Mm. Uh... And for poison slime damage. Spray. No, it does heat damage. Um, heat? Oh, god guess... damn it! <laughs> That's so silly. Uh, slime spray, a butterfly knife, a wooden katana, and I'm like, I want to show him the shotgun because <laughs> I played it safe the first time, and I always showed him the. Uh... You know, I want to show him the mushrooms I have. Mm-hmm. I have my take. Hmm. Damn, I'm out of space. This is about as safe as it gets. I guess Doesn't sell some items. Doesn't look like you're carrying anything dangerous. I like that he just takes your word for it, that the one, like, thing you show him is all you have. I'm carrying, like, four shotguns and four katana. Like, how do you carry all that without it, like, being very obvious that you're carrying all that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So... Uh, six pick me up should do it. Or let's do uh, seven. Probably do another maple syrup and whoop. Oh, I'm out of space. All right. Uh, that should be fine. Should have plenty of good stuff. Ooh, oh, any any other spot? This is like the big, big uh place 
like, uh, what, what is it, in po the original Pokemon, the, like, actual city, whereas before you're in just kind of, like, towns. Oh, um, the one with, like, two gyms and a, uh... With, like, the skyscraper Pokemon. Yeah, art. the one that you can't get to until you give a cop a drink. You yeah. gotta bribe the police into letting you in. Bribe them with lemonade. Yeah, one is like a Silph Cove building. Yeah. Fearless. Uh, I know what you're talking about. I don't know the name. Um, I Saffron, City. Cerulean? Saffron City. Saffron. No, Saffron. Yeah. If we go to Cerulean City. Um, well, there's also the one with like the massive mark. Do we want that this was one? like. Uh, uh. uh. What's. Like that one Pokemon mark with like where you can get to EV on a nearby building and the penthouse and all that. Mmm, I don't remember. It's the one uh, right next to Bike Road with the sleeping Snorlax blocking you from getting to it. Oh yeah, ah, uh, that's god damn. And let's the, go. Uh... Hold on. Let's go. Let's go one by one. I think that'll help a little more. So first one's Pallet Town. Uh-huh. And then we get to Viridian City, which is where uh -huh. the Elite Four is and Giovanni, but you don't do that till the end of the game, which was clever. Unless you play, unless you play uh, Eevee or oh. Pikachu. Let's go Eevee and let's go Pikachu. Giovanni is not the um, boss. Really? Or the, the gym leader. It's Blue. Oh, that's neat. Um, it is. And he changes the uh, method for getting to him. So you actually have to do uh, something else to get to him. Mm -hmm. It's so much more fun. Um, I wish that there were wild Pokemon battles for level grinding. But instead, you just catch Pokemon. Like, as soon as you run into a wild Pokemon, you just catch it. And, uh, that's how you gain XP, and all your, you don't even need XP share, it just automatically splits among all your Pokemon. And another thing I do like is that they, um, if you buy the Pokeball, which is, like, a shit ton of money, but mm -hmm. my girlfriend and I wanted complete Pokedexes. Oh, the so physical, we, the physical ball yeah. that you actually use as a controller. It's just like an analog stick, right? Yeah, it's an analog stick and a, uh, two buttons, basically, because the analog stick works as one button. Oh. And um, uh, there's a button on top. But you, you can take a Pokemon and put it in the Pokeball and take it out in public with you for uh, XP. So if oh. you're actually playing... So you have it in the Pokeball, and if you play Pokemon Go, it can actually help you as you play Pokemon Go. Hmm. I never really... And, I never played Pokemon Go, because when it was at its height, I didn't have a good enough phone. Uh, we did, and it was worth it, um, uh, in my opinion. Like, if you could afford it, and the, you, you know, had no qualms about the price and all that, it, it really was worth the expense, in the, my opinion. The thing I've heard is that it's an exceptionally comfortable controller. If you have a normal sized hand, sure. I did not. I have huge hands. And I have small uh, hands, so it probably wouldn't be great for me. Uh, it would probably be fine for you. Hmm. Um, I have, like, my fist is the size of a soda can. Ooh. Um, yeah. Is it any wonder that I get a lot of subs that are just like, Hi! Um. Hey! You just, yeah. you post a picture that's just like shoulders up, normal portrait. Hmm. There's a picture of you holding a drink. Ah, oh, yeah. Uh, you'd be shocked. But yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Pretty much. What? Right? That is 100%. 100%. Um. Yo, Gino, he's level 14 now. Uh, let me get back to. I was naming the. I was naming the towns. Um. So a after. 
After Viridian is Pewter City or Town? Pewter City. Pewter City. Then Cerulean City. That's where Misty's at. Um, uh huh. Lieutenant Surge is in Vermilion City? Yeah. I don't fucking remember the city. <laughs> Vermilion City, that's where the SSN nope. is. Um, fourth one, fourth one's where it gets hazy. Um, Lavender Town. Lavender Town, the, yeah, the spooky one. Yep. Although that doesn't really have a gym, it, it has the the one situation, and that's connected with uh the the larger city, Saffron. Uh -huh. Then there was Koga, which is um oh gosh, what was Koga's? Uh. At the Safari Zone. I remember the actual place, I just don't remember the name. God damn it. Um, I never remember the names. I just remember the map. Which, yeah. by the way, if you buy Pokemon Eevee or Pikachu, it comes with a map. Ooh. And you realize that the map doesn't make sense. Oh, certainly not. Because the SSN is uh, basically just on a lake. Yeah. Like, a very small lake. That you could ride your bike around. Mm. Um, you cannot go anywhere on the SSN the way that map is laid out. Yep, and then last would be Cinnabar Island. Uh, I don't let remember me make that. Sure I've got some I don't think I missed any there. I might have missed a couple. It has been a long time since I played any version of Red, which I mostly I mostly played Crystal. That was the first one for me. I loved Pokemon from the moment it came to America, the show and the cards and everything, but I didn't get a copy of the game until Crystal, and then I didn't really play any other ones. I've played uh, I've played Fire Red and Leaf Green quite a bit. I've played every Pokemon game with the exception of one. Uh, let me think, what is the one I haven't played? Um, God. Black and white two. No, I've played that one. Uh, well, let's run them down again. We got uh, red, blue. Uh, red, blue, yellow, is the first generation. Yeah, I've played uh red and yellow. All right, gold, silver, and silver. crystal. Played silver. Okay. Uh, ruby, See sapphire, emerald. I believe I've played those, but I can never, like, you have to tell me what happened at the beginning. That's the one that's, like, got the Ky Kyogre and the, uh, Groudon. Is it's, like, never, Team Magma, uh, Team Aqua. Yeah, then I've played that one. Okay. Um. Ah, uh, shit. This is, again, where it gets hazy. Um, I'm pretty sure next was Diamond, Diamond Pearl. Pearl. Diamond Pearl yeah. and, uh, uh... Platinum? I think that's the one I haven't played, but I don't know for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it's a the lot of one. people haven't played that one. That was like a lull in the series where nobody was very interested. Yeah. Let me Google, because I need to know what happened at the beginning of them. Yeah, to know and then which it one. was black and white, black and white two, X, Y. Um, I, I don't think I've played X and Y either. Uh, um, then Pokemon, Pokemon Sun Moon, Sun and Moon Two, Ultra Moon, Ultra Moon. Or right, yeah, that's what it was. It was Pokemon Sun and Moon, Pokemon Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon. Um, and then Sword Shield, which yeah, they haven't done like the middle iteration. Oh, and I forgot. Let's go. Pikachu and Eevee was uh, between Sun and Sword and Shield. Yeah, and it's basically just a reboot of Red. Yeah. Like, slightly different. Yeah, it's every, little... it's every like, two generations they do a remake. Like, when we got to, like, um, after Ruby Sapphire, like, Diamond and Pearl, they did, uh, they did the, uh, Fire Red Leaf Green, 
And then when they went past that, they did uh, Heart Gold, Soul Silver. And then after that, it's, it's, it's kind of just like folding back on itself like a friggin' like a friggin' Philo dough. Um, I will say that Let's Go Eevee and Let's Go Pikachu has better post-game content mm. than uh, Red by a long shot. Interesting. Um, but I would also say that it's just better than Sword and Shield as well. Yeah. I've only played a couple. Um, I played almost all of Pokemon Sun. Um, I didn't finish it. I'm like literally at the very end, and it just, it, I, I, it was just so dull by the end because like they've made the game so easy that like I literally had one moment that there was any challenge. It was in the Leaf Trial, and like there, it was actually kind of challenging because it was like holy shit. It's like we're about evenly matched, but they're way faster than me, so they keep killing me before I get a chance to attack. And so I was like, "All right, I gotta get, I gotta get a speed X for the first time. I'm actually gonna use some of the status items. I'm gonna get some speed Xs, and I'm gonna go really fast so that I can win this battle." And that was that was the solution. And it was super. It was probably the best fun I've ever had with Pokemon because it felt like a puzzle that I had to solve and strategize. It felt like the show when he was always like, oh, I have to teach P Pikachu the fast moves and stuff. But Pikachu, then... shock harder this time! Yeah. <laughs> I mean, let's be real. Listen, you're at a 90 volts. We need you at a 5,000. Alright, alright. Bring it up a couple notches, Pikachu. We need... Those melee amps aren't coming in fast enough. Is it? We're gonna have to find uh, another Pikachu if you can't meet your numbers. <laughs> it's like there's amps, watts, and volts, and like one is how strong the current is, one is like the speed, and the other is like the bandwidth, basically? One is the amount of energy, right. and the other two are uh, how hard they hit, and mm. how... Uh, long you can draw that out okay um so i want to say it's milliamps that kill you mm. uh like you could have a thousand or a billion volts go through you but if it goes through you at a slow speed because it's not going through uh you know at it's only going through at one milliamp mm -hmm. versus going through you at 50 milliamps you know that's the difference. Oh, what the hell? I can't use these cannons? All right. Well, of course not. You can jump in them. Well, if I jump on them, then they, it, just, it immediately... Oh, yeah, no, you have to jump in the one at the end. Yeah. You have to do the platforming. Yeah, Don't be okay. silly, Iggy. Oh, damn. Did you honestly think that this game was going to let you get away without platforming? God damn it. Ooh, it's surprisingly difficult, this cannon, because it's, like, it's using momentum, so you gotta, like, get in the swing. Yeah, you gotta, like, aim everything just right. Well, it's not even... Because it fun. looks like it's it moves to three positions, but it's actually going, like, in an arc. Yeah, it, it really does. It's... it is... These bees look kind of terrible, I gotta say. They're, they're, the shading is not working on them. Uh, my favorite thing about the bees is how they're like just waving their ass in, at you threateningly. Mm -hmm. Just like, you want, you want some of my sweet honey ass? You want my ass? Uh, I'll yes. give you my ass. Uh, rip, you, you might feel a little prick. Rip'em <laughs> uh, says, and what is a what? Um, it's, I fucking, like, you... You're better off finding somebody who knows what the fuck they're talking yeah. about. Or Googling shit. it, honestly. Yeah, uh, I am not an ex. I was trained in this uh, 13 years ago, and I did not finish the course. Oof. So that w uh, That's like a decent job, though. Like, electrician? No, no, no. It wasn't... no, no, no. Not electrician. Oh. I wasn't going to be that. I wanted to do radio work. I wanted to be on radio as mm. a, like, DJ. Oh, yeah. And uh, the college I went to to sign up 
had that listed as something that you could study, but then when I went to like sign up for the courses, the course, like the administrator that was signing me up was like, we don't have anything like that. We've never had anything like that. What the hell? Yeah, and she checked, and so I was like, well, this is, that's what it says here. So she checked again, and there, it was just not true. Like, it was not listed. And I didn't really have any other options at that point. So What the I hell? Just, so she signed me up for recording engineering instead. Which is... Figuring that, you know... In a similar vein, but not yeah, quite so the same it's thing. it's the same stuff that you and I have been doing uh, with, like, our sound boards and all that, you know, and sound mixing. But again, it's been 13 years. And so part of what that course was, was learning how to build a circuit and how to, you know, operate that kind of stuff. Well, the thing and is, so, too, like, the software has changed, but for the most part, like, those fundamentals have stayed consistent. Like, pretty much yeah. all the software is doing is emulating what would be the actual physical hardware devices that you'd be using. Yeah. And as you know, I have... A physical mixer like yeah. I have an actual mixer that I use for that kind of thing um, and I mean I do too I have a I for those who don't know I'm a professional voice actor so I have a lot of pretty decent audio equipment the thing is not great but to be professional you don't necessarily need great you just there's just like a lower bar and once you hit that or go above it you're fine. Like, you don't have to have the biggest stuff. I'd say if you have nothing, probably like three to five hundred bucks for like all the equipment you need and to set up a space with the proper, uh, the proper sound dampening and everything. So it's not the most expensive thing. As far as businesses go, that's pretty cheap, but it's still an investment. Yeah. Um, so. I, you know, did a lot of work with breadboards and LEDs and mm. stuff and tra resistors, transistors, things like that. And I retained none of it. Oof, yeah. It, it, it goes right out your mind like a sieve if you don't practice it. Uh, I was married. I was engaged to my son's mom at the time. Mm. It was not a good relationship. Mm. And I wound up dropping out because of her. Um, so, I wound up having to drop out, um, it was just a bad, bad time. Uh, a couple years later, I went back to college for, uh, I wanted to be a director, I think. Hmm. I think that's what it was originally. Like a and, film director? Yeah. Okay. And, uh, that didn't go well because of I took a summer course mm -hmm. which was uh, instead of like being tailored to the time limit you had which was two months you just had to do a five like a semester long course in five months oh no or two months and so instead of having a full semester to work on it uh you know that's what you ended up with. And so I was like, well, fuck, you know, what do I do? So I wound up failing that course because I didn't know that there was all this extra work I had not done. Mm. And my teacher was like, I should pass you because you're the only one who fucking knows Spanish. Right. So like, I, I'm not kidding when I say a lot of my classmates were extremely white. And so, Iggy, you speak a modicum of Spanish, right? A little bit, yeah. So if you were to order a hamburger, or it, I, I'll give you the phrase, a pretty simple phrase. You tell me how you would say it in Spanish. Uh -huh. I would like to eat a hamburger and french fries. Uh, a quiero... Quiero... No, you're already wrong. <laughs> what? Yeah, you're already wrong. How? How? You'd say, Tengo ganas de comer un hamburguesa y papas fritas. Hmm. Um, 
So hearing my classmates who are, again, extremely white say that, it's hamburguesa, right? That's how you say hamburger. Their pronunciation would be tango, gana, stay, comer, un hamburguesa, and papas fritas. Hmm. And I tell you one thing. If you're the one white guy who can properly pronounce Spanish words in a group, like a, at a factory where I worked later, and you have stories like that, you are the most popular white guy in that Damn. fucking factory because they love those stories, making fun of the other white people. Uh, fucking tend to be a dude going to Taco Bell, ordering and pronouncing all the words, like, the wrong way. That is some <laughs> of the best fucking... Yeah, I'd like uh, 12 chicken vaginas. No, no fish vaginas. I can't stand the taste of fish when I'm eating a vagina. It, you'll have everyone around you in tears. Fucking, yeah. it's the best. And... Uh, Rip Ham says to switch out Mallow for Peach to use healing. I don't... Mm, I think I'm good with items so far, but Andrew, what do you think? I don't like having a healer, because... Mallow has HP rain after all. Mm -hmm. Um, so if I really need that, I can use Mallow. Um, I, 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 I'm happier with items personally. So. Uh, do I need to go through this like jumping course? No. What? Oh. It's totally optional. Okay. I mean, I didn't know if that was like the direction I needed to go. Or, okay, there is a path here. I just need to go through that. God damn it. Yeah. God damn it. Damn it, Bobby. Ah. Uh, All right. Uh, but, ooh, yeah. In fact, uh, I'll probably take... Once I get to the town, I think? If there is a town I'd here. go seven minutes. I'd go seven more minutes and then take your break. Oh, that to the one... The Yeah, 9.30 mark? Yeah. Uh, um, plus this is a little bit fun. Uh, Monstro Town is great. It's one of my favorite places in the game. Okay. It's also going to be an area with the hardest platforming in the entire game. Yikes. Okay. And I do mean that. And I recommend not trying to treat it like a platformer. Just treat it like, you know, just... You can cheese it by just being patient and waiting. I would mm. just do that. There's no benefit to, like, that I'm aware of to, uh, actually trying. Right. You'll know it when you see it. Like, I don't have to tell you. You'll know it. Okay. Um, like, it will be incredibly obvious what part I'm talking about. The thing is also, it's... like, if one of your party members dies, they come back at the end of the fight, so as long as you can survive with at least one. Plus, if they die, yeah. the pick-me-up... Brings does... them back to full health. Yeah. yeah, so it's like, it's better to just wait and use that and get a few more turns out of them than to try and heal them with whatever mid-mushroom that takes, like, three turns. Now, if you're having trouble still, after all that, you could, uh... Like, with a boss battle specifically, yeah, switch to Princess Peach. But mm -hmm. otherwise, it's really just not, in my opinion. Oh, hell, where? He said to it? follow the ant. I guess I went down the wrong one. All right. Let me yeah. head back. He said, follow the ant once it pops up. Down the whirlpool. I always wondered if ant lions were real. Apparently, they're real. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, oh. That's the one. Aw, oh, hell. Aw, oh, hell. Aw, oh, hell. I think, are they a thing in Japan? Or, like, in the desert? Apparently they're a kind of ant that hides in other ant holes for them to come home. Oh. And then they eat them. What's their, what's their main country of origin? I don't know. They didn't tell me their passport. I don't know. Fucking... You're talking like you're looking at Wikipedia right about now. No, I, I looked it up the other day. Mm, okay. 
Am I getting attacked? Listen. Oh. No, I was... I, I clicked away from my game. Oh, okay. Ant lions are a group of about 2,000 species in the family Mimer... Myrmillontidae, known for the fiercely predatory habits of their larva, in which many species dig pits to trap passing ants or other prey. So they kind of look like a fucking cruel beetle. Hmm. So they're they're not ants. They're a bug that I misread that part. Their larva eat other ants. Hmm. Okay. You know, with you mumbling, am I being attacked earlier? I was like, I mean, I guess, yeah. <laughs> you ain't got the info. Uh, my fucking thing, am I, am I under arrest here? I need to talk to a lawyer. What? What's going on? Am I fired? Ah, uh, you oh, gotta God, be hired to, to get fired. Stories. I need to tell some stories. Oh boy. Um, so I used to work for Family Dollar. Mm -hmm. And there are multiple devices Family Dollar uses for security in their stores. Sure. Um, one you see a lot is the little tag on clothing. Mm. Where, uh, and you've seen one, I assure you. It's the thing where they, where you buy a shirt and there's this big plastic tag and you have to go up and, like, click a thing and get it off and all that. Yup. And if you try and take it home, the only way to really get it off is to... Uh, what is it? There, there's like a trick with like a hair straightener or some. No, it's a magnet. You can just do it with a magnet. Okay. Um, I won't tell you how to do it with a magnet, but you can do it with a magnet. Um, it, well, a brief aside, it makes me think of um, a few years back, uh, my my dad's girlfriend, she got like a bottle of whiskey from the store and they forgot to take that off. So then it was a long, a long thing of just uh, trying to figure out like, can we Google a way to take this off? And when people ask on, like, Yahoo Answers or whatever, they're like, why don't you just buy it instead? And it's like, I did, though. What do I do if they forgot to take it off? Yeah, normally it would set off the alarm when you try to leave. Mm -hmm. And that's usually like, oh, yeah, that. But, um, so what we also had were these little stickers for other things, like for electronic devices, because you couldn't you know, pierce, uh, those. Mm. Like you'd see divi in a book? Uh, no, it would just be like a, a little sticker, and if you were to peel it off, you'd see, um, like a little wire frame type thing underneath. Oh yeah, they do that, they put that in, uh, books at li different bookstores, but, uh, they usually won't actually peel out the sticker, they'll just kind of tuck it in the pages. Well, they'll also deactivate them. Yeah. Um, that's what you do. Like, if you've ever bought any electronics, you see them rubbing it on this weird little pad. They're deactivating that. Mm -hmm. And so, um, <coughs> at Family Dollar, they'd put that on anything they wanted to, uh, protect. So, like, we wound up at one of the Family Dollars I worked at, because I got transferred around a lot. We'd have to put it on, like, just about everything in the health and beauty section. Like, pain pills, cough medicine. Mm-hmm all kinds of shit and uh so one day i'm bored i have like at, our store was a little sleepy in the evenings like it was very empty for the most part yeah so I'm, like, I'm gonna fuck with my assistant manager that's here today i have nothing else to do and she <laughs> is perfect for fucking with yeah she is prank just time perf like she's one of those that is just a perfect target so um i do that I stick one of those stickers on the bottom of her soda. And oh, no. I also... I bury one of the tags at the bottom of her purse. Oh, no. So, she sets off the alarm. And she's like, what went off the alarm? When she went to leave for the night. And I said, check the bottom of your drink. So she sees that and goes, oh, ha, ha, and just keeps going to her car. And I'm like, the die have been cast. <laughs> she goes to CVS, like, a couple days later, <laughs> and it sets off the alarm because of the tag in her purse. Oh, lord. And That's get, like, great, the, the, the double fake out. Yeah, the security comes and checks her purse. And, like, She's like, I work for Family Dollar, this is one of ours. 
you can tell it's different from the way yours look. It just works the same way. Mm -hmm. My employee is an asshole. <laughs> They're like, oh, yep. we have one of those. <laughs> and they let her go. Uh, let's take a break. It is 9.30 after all. It is, and certainly. I will tell the rest of the stories about my fucking with her after the break. Well, uh, yep, let me get to, uh, let me get to one of my turns. Here we yeah. go. There we go. All right. We will return in just a few short minutes, folks. Stay tuned. Or not. I mean, that's your choice. Who are we to tell you what to do? Yeah, 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 yeah. It is a request. Thank you very much. Bon jour. All right, back to it. Mm. Let's see, uh, where was I at? Yep, there it is. Crifid. Okay, I thought that was another one of the uh, artichoke chokenoids or whatever. Artichokers? I don't remember. That was a long time ago. I've been playing playing plenty of games since then. Ah, oh, crap, it turned into a ding dang scarecrow. Well, that just... That just chaps my gums. Let me try to have it over here. There we go. <clears throat> Andrew is probably off doing his, his business still. As he does. As he sometimes reveals a little too... Uh, a little too enthusiastically when he doesn't think the mic is on. So... We'll just wait for him to return keep playing through this game I'm making pretty good headway honestly I'm almost I'm getting almost nervous that uh that I might overdo it you know I don't want to I don't want to blast through the end of the game too soon before uh, before I get a chance to before I get a chance to like not before I get a chance to before I get to play origami King on Friday so my hope is that thurs by Thursday I'll be able to be at the end of this game, last couple hours or so, and then at m about midnight I finish this game, 
And then I go whip up Origami King because it should be out by then. In my experience, that's what's happened anytime there's a, a new release for a game that I pre-ordered on the Switch. Already downloaded, all ready to go. Just has to connect to the internet and check that I actually bought the thing. And lo and behold, I'll have a game right there waiting for me. So excited. It's going to be a fun one. I can already tell. Uh, let me double check that I didn't... Alright, Andrew is unmuted on my end, so he can just pop back in whenever he's ready. Origami King looks like a ton of fun. The battles, they, the strategy with them, it just looks like a puzzle game practically, and I'm, I'm big on puzzle games. The one I often go back to is uh, Picross, any kind of Picross, you know. Nonogram.com is my favorite app right now. It's uh, a lot of a lot of challenges. There are there are daily challenges, and then they'll have events where they just have a whole bunch to do. I also like the Picross E games on 3DS, and the uh, Picross S, which was the same series but a little different on the Switch. That that one is a ton of fun for anybody out there who likes Picross. And if you haven't played Picross, I'd highly recommend it. There's plenty of free free apps. Uh, like I said, nonogram.com, so N-O-N-O-Gram on the App Store or uh, Google Play or whatever you have. And you can get it for for free. There's ads, which, you know, ads, real unfortunate, real annoying, but uh, they're all that stop you from playing some fun, puzzly games. Oh, oh, I got a star! Go, go, go. I'm back. Hello. Uh, this is one where you're gonna fight a big boss. Oh boy, alright. And you're gonna wanna turn around and immediately go back afterwards and heal at the uh, inn. Oh, sure. Such as it will be. So... I don't know if you've been following, because this is when E3 would be happening most years, but instead, a lot of people are basically taking Nintendo's direction and doing effectively directs. So today was Ubisoft yeah. Forward, a live stream. Um, yeah, and I heard people were uh, questioning whether they should do that, and I'm like, oh god, what happened? And apparently they've got some problems going on. Uh, what did you hear? I don't know, because all I saw was that there's some problems going on. Well, so Ubisoft Forward, they released more information about games that we already knew were coming, like uh, the new Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Um, Which they had Game Rooms play 15 minutes of. Yeah. Which was weird. Yeah. Then, uh, let's see, Far Cry 6, which people were expecting a new one. They'd already leaked that Giancarlo Esposito was going to play the villain in this one, which I'm super excited for. I'm a huge fan of his work. Um, and he already worked with uh, the villain, the the actor who plays the villain in Far Cry 3 on Better Call Saul, where they play uh, Gus and uh, Nacho, Nacho Varga. Okay. Um, I've never watched. Oh, I'd, I'd certainly recommend it. It's some great drama. Very... But Bear Call Saul, I'd say I like a lot more, because while the pace is a lot slower, the the it's a lot more of the dark comedy that was present in uh, Breaking Bad. It's, I didn't watch that either. Uh... Gosh, I'm trying to... Th I, I mean, I'd say it's also good. I just personally prefer Better Call Saul. Part of it's because it's a legal comedy, like a dark legal comedy that also has a lot of the same Breaking Bad kind of um, drug cartel drama kind of stuff. And it looks like uh, not exactly the same thing on, um, on Far Cry 6, but a, a similar vein. So I hope he's not getting pigeonholed with those roles. Um, I mean, it's plausible, yeah. Uh, then they also release more info about Watch Dogs Legion, which is going to be the new Watch Dogs game set in London in the uh, near, the not-too-distant future, as they'd say, in uh, 
X-Men or MST3K. And that one, they made, there was this awesome animated short film that was just the sickest thing I've ever seen. It was like modern day cyberpunk, which I, I love that shit. So much cyberpunk is mired in 80s ideas of the retro futurism that is involved in it, but like seeing a modern take on it and seeing how it's only slightly exaggerated because for the most part, we have a lot of those technologies. They're just not quite to the level of what they are in a game like Watch Dogs. Um, it, uh, I was a little concerned with their method of advertising it because they, they, uh, what's the, what's the quote? The, um, they came for the, they came for the socialists and I did not say anything for I was not a socialist. That whole long quote. They uh -huh. basically, they made a riff on that where it was like, they came for the protesters and I was not a protester. They came for the journalists. There's a fucking terrifying shot in there though where every now and then with each line they like show like news websites about whatever they're talking about and then they say they came for the journalists and i was not a journalist so i did not stand up and as they're doing that all of the news sites are down every single one and that's the most terrifying concept to me of just logging onto the internet one day and all of the news sites are shut down Ooh. oh i'm getting chills just thinking about it it's a terrifying idea. I mean, under some people's ideal of the future, that would be. I mean, to be fair, that's what fuckhead's trying to do already. So that's what I'm saying. Is like that's why this it's such a perfect form of cyberpunk for what we have because it's like it's a it's a little bit further. But I could believe this happening in the next 10, 20 years, if not sooner, if pe the wrong people get their way. Um, and it's it's you are the resistance fighting against it, which I I'm 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 stoked on that idea because I'm I would very much like to be if that were if that were the world we were living in. I would certainly do whatever That's I could. That's just it, though. We are living in everything they've warned us about like yeah they can turn your phone on and like turn on your like I, if i told you oh the nsa can use the camera and the microphone in your phone without you even knowing it's being used to spy on you you'd be like sure andrew no they can't like that is a fact yeah they, they can, can and they probably have like that thing from batman that looked like uh bullshit like that's not real with Lucius yeah. Fox. Like, that's a real thing that the NSA can do right now. Yeah, and I would not be shocked if they got an idea from that. Like, that's the thing is we have the technology to do those things, so the people decide to do those things. Um, it's also, it's pretty apropos that it's set in London because, like, things are pretty bad here, but, like, in England, the surveillance state that they're living under, like, the cameras on every single street corner watching everything like having to get like your shit digitally scanned as you go into nightclubs like it's it is some serious cyberpunk shit and it's yeah. just what people are living in yeah and as bad as we think we've got it china's got it so much worse yeah um china it is fucking scary what's going on there um, and, like, you, people say, oh, com no, you can't do comedy anymore, nobody wants comedy. That's not why comedies aren't being made. Like, it's not woke culture or cancel culture like they, like, claim. It's absolutely China. Mm hmm Because Hollywood's biggest movies right now are, what, blockbuster action movies. Yeah, with, uh, with because... usually pretty simple plots. Um, yep. big, big, like, very simple dialogue, uh, big name action actors. It's the Avengers. Yeah. Let's be straight. Because so, it, it needs to be understandable even if you don't necessarily speak English. It has to cross cultural lines. Yeah. And there's and also, that's why, um, if there is anything like, no ghosts, no gays is the rule. Because you can't have ghosts and you can't have gays. 
in your films if you want them to do well in China, which is why when there is something that's like, um, that is like Onward that had like a single scene that mentioned that a cop was a lesbian, uh, they do that so minimally so that it's easy to edit out when they send it to China. Uh -huh. Which sa it sounds like a, a crazy conspiracy, but it's like, no, that's actively how the movie industry accurate. works. Yeah, because China does more business for a movie than the United States. You don't hear people whining, oh, cancel culture's ruined romance movies, but you're not getting those either. And you're not getting the combination of the two in a rom-com. Mm -hmm. you're, uh, you're just not getting them because they don't play well. And part the of only thing the only thing you get are like Happy Madison movies that are all like slapstick toilet and humor. straight to Netflix. Yeah, now it's straight to Netflix because he made that deal, um, which it's kind of uh, hilarious. Even then, uh, I, I'll like... I'm gonna hold a thought, but uh, remember Happy Madison for after this discussion. Yeah, um, but and you may think, oh well, it's because they don't like the. No, it's not that they don't like comedy. You can look at movies like Kung Fu Hustle and see they love comedy. Mm -hmm. The problem is idiom. Idioms don't translate, and so much of comedy is based off of idioms. And for like, if you're wondering, like, what does that mean? Like, if I were to say the phrase "out of sight, out of mind," that's an idiom. Mm -hmm. uh, idioms don't translate well because. There are idioms that we don't have in English that they have in other languages that we don't understand. And hell, there are idioms that you have in Eastern United States that you won't have in Western United States. Oh, sure. A good example of uh, idioms would be the, uh, it's hotter than a, you know, fuck, like, whatever fucking Doug Dimodome would say. Mm. You know, um, or I was more afraid than a whore in church, like, that kind of thing. Those are idioms, and that doesn't make sense when you translate it, because they don't have the same cultural background for those phrases. They don't. Yeah, get what they re mean. they require a lot of context. Right. Whereas if you grew up with those phrases, you immediately get it. Like, ah, oh, I get what he's saying. A whore would be very afraid in church. Mm. Yeah. And so. Uh, there's a French phrase for uh, it's cinq à sept, which is five to seven, and you and I have no clue what that means without context. And the context is that's the time of day you spend with your mistress. You get off work at five, you spend five to seven with your mistress or your lover, whoever it is, and then you go and fucking go to your wife or your spouse. And it's just such a common thing that, you know, the P.E. So, um, it's just how idioms work. And so, because romance in America is different from romance in China or, you know, what have you, the rom-coms don't work in America, or in China, the same way they do here. Um, it's just because it does not translate well to a foreign market, and that's why cop- and everybody likes to say, oh, you can't make comedies anymore, everybody gets so offended. No, it has nothing to do with that, and it has everything to do with the Chinese market just wouldn't laugh at it, and it wouldn't make as much money so that, uh, studio doesn't want to invest in it. The studios are not going to invest money in something that's not going to make them more money back. And when you have the Avengers raking in so much fucking money that, you know, they can oh, yeah. live peacefully off the profits of that. I mean, alone. everything, everything in entertainment is based around what you can make off of it. That's why the term, uh, blank is un is impossible to adapt is a thing like it usually refers to books like especially lord of the rings was called this for a long time of like it's impossible to adapt what it actually means is not that someone couldn't figure out a way to adapt it it's that it would make it would uh cost way too much to make in a way that would be entertaining enough 
and it would not be marketable enough to make back any of that money. So it's not that it's uh. physically impossible, it's that it is uh, financially impossible. Yeah. And that's the problem, like... So. That's why. Um, but, uh, you were going to say about Happy Madison? Yes. So Happy Madison, as most people know, is Adam Sandler and his gang. That's their movie studio. And uh, they basically make movies all the time. Um, they It's started with, you know, Happy Gilmore and Billy Madison. That's where the name comes from. And those were pretty good. But then after a while, he stopped caring. And in reality, nowadays, he just hires a director that he trusts. And he basically picks a location that he wants to vacation at and he and will just use the money right. towards that that's right yep. that's why a lot of them are bad and also they have a ton of product placement and a ton of other uh like they have a ton of product placement they're usually pretty small um as far as comedies go so it's pretty inexpensive to make so he would do them through columbia which is sony pictures and he before the netflix deal and there's a podcast called Worst Idea of All Time. And the concept was these two guys from New Zealand were going to watch Grown Ups 2, the sequel to the Happy Madison film Grown Ups, once a week, every week, for a year, and review it in a podcast. Each episode's about 30 minutes, but it's still, it's 26 hours. Uh, it's a fantastic, hilarious podcast because they are stand-up comedians and radio show hosts. Uh, they're both stand-up comedians. One of them's a radio show host. And they are, I guess, larger in the New Zealand scene than they are out here. But uh, the thing is, a few years back, um, North Korea hacked Sony Pictures because of the movie The Interview, the Judd Apatow film. Uh -huh. And the thing is, they released a bunch of stuff. But it wasn't just about the interview, it was from all of Sony. So the podcast was more interested in hearing what was happening on the Happy Gilmore side internally. And there was an email they found that said, uh, basically, like, we have to crack down on the S Sandler and his crew. They've somehow gotten a crazy good contract, and they're th running us out to dry. Yeah. And it's like, um, yeah, honestly, like, on, on the one hand, it doesn't make good movies. But on the other hand, he found something that works in life, and he's screwing over big, big uh, movie corporations that don't deserve that money either. So, eh. He's like Robin Hood, but kind of shittier because he's only working for himself. I mean, you know, after you watch, like, two Adam Sandler movies, you start to get the impression, and it doesn't matter which two. It could be any two from any period of life. You get the impression he really just doesn't give a shit about, like, trying. Oh, he all. hasn't for a long time because he doesn't have to. He can make millions because they're like the biggest selling fucking things ever like they make huge profits it's sim it's similar in a way to uh bloom house who make a ton of shitty horror movies but the thing is they make everything on a very very small budget and they all break even basically maybe lose a little bit of money but then every now and then he makes like uh get out you know, something that's an Oscar-worthy movie, and that pays for, like, everything else. And he just expands and expands and expands it. Yeah. Um. Well, oh, so, we were talking before, uh, pranks I pulled on my assistant manager. Mm. One second. First, though, what's this invisible fight? What, what am I doing here? I don't know. I never fucking got in that fight. Shit. Um, well, guess I'll figure it out. I'd just run. Mm, let me but, see. Uh, I'm gonna see if I can do something, but if it gets hairy, I'll run. Uh, prank I pulled on her last time. That was the last prank I pulled, because... Mm, there we go. Good... I need to use a, a terrorize to uh, make invisible. Uh, the prank I pulled that is honestly my favorite, too. Uh, was she was supposed to start work at 4 o'clock. Mm -hmm. But for some reason, she thought she had to be at work at 3 o'clock. Oh no. It was 2.30, and so she was rushing to get to work what she thought was on time, 
but she would have actually been an hour early. Oh no. And so she called the store and was like, it was me and the store manager, so like the one like actual manager. Mm hmm. And I'm the one that luckily answered the phone. And right. She's like, I know I'm supposed to be there at three. I'm rushing. I'm, I'm on 85 right now. I'm rushing to get there as soon as I can. And I look over at the schedule. I'm like, well, you better hurry. You know how she gets <laughs> if you're late. <laughs> <laughs> you son of a bitch. So, <laughs> uh, she gets there at three. And I said, uh, the boss wants to see you in her office. She said, don't even bother clocking in yet. Oh, Lord. And, because <laughs> she would have clocked in an hour early. I was like, she wants to see you right now. And she's like, oh god. And I'm like, yeah, she's pretty pissed. Oh no. And so she walks, she walks to the back of the store. So from where I'm standing, what I hear is, thunk, oh, of the two office doors. And then, Nothing while I'm stocking deodorant next to a customer who's you know shopping. And then a few seconds later, the two of us hear thump, thump. Andrew, I hate you. Oh. I just fall down laughing. Like I immediately fall down laughing. And uh, <laughs> the customer looks over at me and is like, "I guess you're Andrew." I was like, yeah. <laughs> and so what uh, Pam told me later, the store manager, was uh, the assistant manager got there, peeked, like opened the door a tiny little crack, peeked her head in and goes, am I fired? <laughs> and I was like, why would you be fired? She's like, for being late. And she's like, you're an hour early. <laughs> 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 oh lord. God, it was the fucking best. Ugh. It, she was the best person to prank. Like, bar none. Bellow me. I thought I killed that guy. No, you didn't. Ah, oh, shit. Now, uh... Hmm. I should have warned you to do a quick save. Oh no. Oh because lord. Because... The uh, the thing you get there can uh, actually give you different fortunes. Oh, you I got, uh, you'll have a good meal. Does that sound like a decent one? Um, fine, I guess. There are better ones. Mm. Um, in my opinion. So. Well, too late now. So. Yeah. As long as it's not bad. Um, no, you just have to fight him. The other one, you would have gotten a room full of treasure as well as him. Aw, oh, hell. Oh, well. I'm just trying to get through it for now. Maybe someday I'll do more completionist run, but... I'm solid with this. So, I'm fighting, um... A guy in this game that looks... Quite a bit like a guy I went to high school with that I really did not like. Mm -hmm. And it's really hard not to like see uh, that guy in his face. Mm. Uh, and like, I don't want to ever like talk mean about anybody that can't defend themselves. So, uh, but the best, the one thing I'll say is he looked like uh, if Shrek had a neck beard. Oh lord. And that's. Cruel, but fucking accurate. Yeah. Like, he really looked like he was an asshole to her. Like, uh, I was dating a girl at one point, and he tried to, like, take her from me. Like, he didn't know that we were dating, but he was trying to hit on her. Mm. And he was like, and at the time, she was extremely atheist. Sure. Uh, as was I. And so he was like, I'm a youth pastor, I'm studying to be a full-time pastor. Uh, and he was like trying to, literally trying to save her soul. That's creepy, dude. That's that's like, um... Yeah. 
I don't know. I don't think you would have ever watched Inuyasha. Uh, actually, I did because Maddie wanted to see it. Okay. Uh, you, in Inuyasha, there's the one character who's like a priest, but he's always just like, "Hey, you want to bear my children?" It's like gross. Oh yeah, that guy. That guy's nasty. <clears throat> Apparently, there's like a new Inuyasha movie coming out soon. So we were talking uh, about watching through the series. I watched it back on like Toonami and stuff back in the day, but I never, I never saw the whole thing. It's on Hulu. It's hmm. okay. Yeah. Um. It's anime. It's like the most anime anime I could think of. Yeah. I mean, it's not Naruto bad, but. Hmm. I I've seen worse. Or though, actually, I think the most anime anime would either be JoJo or One Piece. Or Bobobo. Bo. Eh, Bobobo Bo is still kind of a niche thing because it was a comedy. But it's extremely of what it is. Well, parodying. yeah, it's it's kind of um, it it is somewhat a parody. Like it's making fun of basically like JoJo slash Dragon Ball, maybe a bit of Naruto. But like the. It's one of those that knows that in order to make fun of something, you have to, like, if you want to do it well, knowing the thing you're making fun of makes your thing better. Oh, sure. Yeah, you can't and, really do a parody and, without a deep knowledge of the thing you're par paradizing. I mean, you can, but it, people know when you do that. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't look good. It's <laughs> like, also, like, parodies. often, if you try and do parody and make criticisms of something, if you don't know it, you might end up just, like, making a criticism that the show itself answers. You know? Like, being yeah. like, why don't they ever figure this out? It's like, they did, you dipshit. Uh, you know, like, why didn't Ross, the biggest friend, simply eat the others? Yeah, exactly. Get your facts straight. Yeah. Um, but yeah. The... God. I'm just... Or, uh, uh, oh, what's that one that I really... Like, I tried reading the manga for, and it was just off. Like, oh my Rave god. Master. Rave, Rave Oh my Master. god, that was a terrible choice. First off, this is such a sweet scene. Bowser's forgiving this Goomba for running off. That's adorable. Uh, yeah. Um... Rave Master is the one that like made me just give up on manga and anime. Entirely that forever. no, that that was a bad, bad one to pick because like even no, anime no, it's fans, really not. anime fans even fucking hate Rave Master. Like it was one of those things that was a, everywhere, but it's like no, it's it so cheesy it's and that. dated. Well, I mean everywhere. It's not that it's that while reading it, I realized that every anime story I ever saw. Uh, every, like, and it's possible that this, because these are the ones that got ported to the U.S. at the time. Right. But, like, every anime and every manga my friends tried to show me at the time had the same fucking story. Oh, certainly. At that time, a lot of them were similar, and it kind of peaked in that way with Rave Master. Rave Master uh, was the always... one that, like, was really the, the, the top of all that, where everything was just so formulaic nonsense it's like shonen kid stuff from his early tens to teens lives in small town mm -hmm. he wants to be the best at blank he leaves small town and pursue his dream of being best at blank he runs into a person who is slightly better and he beats that person and finds out oh there's a thing like usually a tournament Mm -hmm. of the thing and so you can enter the tournament and he make like finds a guy who's beating up a poor defenseless kid or something along the way or you know just an asshole and so he beats that person and at first they're a villain but then they become part of the dude's posse and then uh yeah it's just shit like that and the, at the end of the first season they're like Oh, you've defeated the bad guys. You've defeated all the bad guys. But actually, there's a super bad guy who's a bigger bad guy than those bad guys. And 
you got to defeat him. And every season there was a bigger bad guy that was more powerful than the previous big bad guy. Well, that's and, okay. Like, that That is true for fighting shonen anime, which are the ones that end up being the most popular. So, I just described the plot of Pokemon, Dragon Ball Z, Rave Master, and Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah, those are all those make... are all fighting shonen. Like that's a one specific. It's also the plot of Initial D, Beyblade. Like yes, these are all the same genre. Initial D was a racing show. It's still the yes, same but it was plot. still fighting. It was fighting through races. Like it's a like, show. It, it's a it. It's more of a sports shonen Yu -Yu anime, Hakusho, but it's like. Uh, Yes, the, again, these are all the same genre. Like, that's the thing, is you need to move past one genre to, like, be able to see the good shit. Nowadays, the more common one is a similar thing, but it's, uh, oh no, I'm a teenager and I died and got sucked into a fantasy video game. And those are called isekai, which means another world. That's the most common one. But similarly, it tends to turn into a fighting shonen. But, like, there's comedy in anime, there's dramas there's some amazing dramas uh there's a uh, one i would refer to as instructional animes where it, they like pick a specific thing they're really into like my favorite one is special effects makeup and it's basically the main character is it's basically like a fighting shonen but they actually teach you stuff about the topic so you learn about uh special effects makeup while reading this manga and still having that same plot that you just said <laughs> Yeah, like, that's the thing, like, it's the same thing. But, well, that's that's some time. stuff, but then, like, what about Fruits Basket, which is a romantic comedy? And romantic comedy I... for... A romantic comedy for anime is very different than it is for American films, to be clear. Like, it's it's very much... It's, it. it's a dark melodrama about a cursed family and how they've been tortured by the people around them because of their curse. If you're trying to sell me on it, you're doing a piss-poor job. That sounds not only awful, but boring. Wait. You gotta, you gotta uh, appreciate the hard feelings, Andrew. It can't all be excitement. Sometimes of... you gotta think about the interpersonal dramas. Sounds like when Maddie tried to get me to watch Mushishi, and I was just like, no, nah, I'm good. I don't know that one. I watched... I watched like three episodes of Mushishi. I'm like, I'm good. Mushishi. No, I I've never heard of this one. Mm, you'd probably like it. Mm. It's basically Ghostbusters. Mm. Guy, uh, talking to ghosts or whatever, so he goes around like helping people with their ghost problems. Mm. Yeah, I'm not super into that. But they're never like evil ghosts. It's always like. Oh, well, this ghost just wanted this thing or whatever, and I'm like, uh, I'm good. Yeah, like a ghost. They have unfinished business. I'm just saying, it's an me. entire art form. Saying that all anime is the same is like saying that all cartoons are the same, all live action films are the same. They all they have their different genres and they have their standouts. Sure. And I am immediately turned off by them the minute I see that it's an anime. Like I just do not cannot make myself care. It's just not for me. Man and it's the right wing that's closed minded? Look at you. Can't even Except the anime. I mean, I just don't give a shit. Like, why? Why would I want to? Like, because it's oh, like... this thing that's incredibly difficult and has a toxic fandom that I have to pay twelve dollars a month to be able to watch any of. Why? No, none of that sounds fun. First off, it's it's sounds... incredibly easy to find it without having to go through a uh, crunchy roll or whatever. And secondly, again, it's like, there's, like, decades of stuff. And I feel like if you open yourself up to it, you'd be able to find at least one anime that you do, in fact, enjoy. What about the Cowboy Bebop? You watch that? No. That one you might like. That's like, no, uh, it's... I've tried. Do you know who your fucking roommate is? I've tried. Yeah. 
I'm, I'm guessing that most of these situations are because of Cory. Keep in mind, Cory, he likes anime, but he also has very basic tastes in anime. Oh no, <laughs> it's not just him. It's the same, like, our high school group of friends, all of them, huge on anime. Hmm. And goddamn, if the same group of friends, uh, one of them just constantly like, hey, you should watch The Matrix. I fucking hate The Matrix, too. The ma You I, hate The Matrix? I fucking cannot sit through The Matrix. Really? Matrix, uh, Monty Python, The Lord of the Rings, can't stand them. The Matrix, though. I hate it. A cyberpunk even, story can't stand about, tr like, the trans journey. Hmm. Cannot stand to watch it. Wow. Doesn't matter what, like... Yeah, that's the metaphor it's tell we're using, but like again, I don't pick up on metaphor, and even knowing that that's what it's about doesn't make it like more interesting for me to watch. Like the knowing what the layer is doesn't make the layer more fun when I didn't like it the first fucking time. Like I cannot stand that movie. I cannot stand that series. It is so fucking boring. Man. A writer who doesn't like subtext. <laughs> this makes me think of, I don't know if you've ever seen Garth Marenghi's Dark Place, but it's basically yeah. a parody. Yeah, the one bit Maybe that's that like... Too. Man, there's one specific line that comes to mind right now, which is, I've known writers who write subtext and they're all cowards. I mean... Well, I don't agree with that directly. I will put it this way. Um, Where the fuck do I go in Monster Town? I'm I'm fucking lost. I, you I go talk to everybody until you meet the old lady, old lady. and then she'll uh, tell you. Oh, I'll get the paratroop like the woman taking care of all the monsters. There's an old lady. She'll tell you. Oh, you you gotta you need the Koopa Troopas to get away, and then you gotta fucking do some platforming on Koopa Troopas that are flying around. Hmm, okay. While well, I'm talking... Oh, there's also a thing where you can sleep in an abandoned bed. Hmm. That's all that's in this place. There's like a mushroom light in a bed. Turn off the lamp, and um... You will... Oh, oh yep, here it is. Uh, you, you'll find out there's a, a scavenger hunt you can do. Oh, okay. Um, the ghosts hide stuff around the world map for you to go find, and you could do that if you want. I don't. Yeah, I'm not. I don't think I really have time for it in this marathon run. Um. Yeah. It. It. it yeah. I'll put it this way though: if you're, uh, if it's a old Cartoon Network Adult Swim program that wasn't like Metalocalypse, I probably fucking hated it. Well, Metalocalypse, like Metalocalypse is one of those special cases because it's it's created by someone who's just such a fucking uh, fan of what he's making oh, fun of. Yeah, he's a fan of it, and he. He's that, like, he's actively, like, yeah, he's making fun of metal music, but, like, he is a metal musician. Like, I don't think everybody gets that Brendan Small is pretty much all of the voices on that show, like, the entire band, and he plays all of the instruments, and he sings the whole thing. Like, he's fully everything behind that, and he still makes stuff. Like, he's made albums with a whole different project that's not exactly Death Clock, it's more like a sci-fi thing, but it's the same kind of comedy. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, like, I tried watching the anime that Adult Swim had, couldn't fucking stand them. Mm. Not Cowboy Bebop, not Bleach, not whatever Bleach anime sucks. you're gonna name. Evangelion, uh, none of them. Oh Don't yeah, like there's it. no way you'd you'd enjoy Evangelion, um, um, if you're if you no don't like Gundam, being steeped in subtext. Not Gundam, none of it. It's just I no, don't like it. it, it <laughs> um, and you can name whatever you want from that era. Like I nope, didn't like Family Guy. 
Mike Fair enough. Mike. I mean, um, Family Guy, to be honest, the first couple seasons were decent, and then it got real bad. Um, Which is pretty gross, more than anything. Yeah. Yeah. The way they handle some of their characters is pretty uh, offensive. Um, the running punchline of everybody just hates Meg, that's not funny. Like, yeah, which again, a lot of the worst stuff. Basically, they had the first two or three seasons and got canceled by Fox, and then they got they uh, were rerun on Adult Swim, and they uh -huh. got so popular that Fox brought it back. And the team that brought it back, oh, they were just so much worse. And yeah, all of the those only... worst tropes from the show came from came from that that team. The only show from that era that Adult Swim had uh, aside from Metalocalypse was Futurama. Mm. And that, that was originally I, a, that was originally a Fox show. So those were just reruns. Yeah. And then it got picked up by Comedy Central for rerun. And then they paid for new episodes which were fantastic. Um, oh, I, I've been mean to watch all of them. Because Futurama... It's on Netflix. Futurama was the first show I'd ever watched every single episode of before it came I back. I love Futurama and can quote it the way some people can do Star Wars or Star Trek. I mean, it's it's just so good. I, I would d most certainly argue that it's better than The Simpsons, like, oh, by yeah. a long shot. And honestly, I'd also say Disenchanted, which was uh, Matt Groening's more recent... Um, yeah. Yeah. That. But, yeah, that. No, I. I, I, I think. Them. I'd say Futurama is a little better than that, if just because it's had a little more time. But both of them are better than The Simpsons, especially current Simpsons. Yeah, and now it's hard to enjoy any of it because Matt Groening's apparently a piece of shit. But oh god damn it! Did he get me tooed? Uh, I'm not entirely sure. So it's you know that rule of. Uh, I don't want to say anything, but, like, Did I, I miss... just know that... Where the hell am I supposed to go to meet these paratroopers now? Uh, head south to south. the far east wall. And far you see a door east. at the bottom of some stairs. Yeah. Uh, go through that door. Right. That just takes me back to the world map. Uh-huh. Okay. And there should be a thing about, uh... Like above you, like uh, there, well, th I see the thing there, Land's but End. nothing. Yeah, you go to Lands End. Oh, I go to Lands End, and then, gotcha. Okay, let me um, save here then. The uh, I just people be better. I, I I hate having to to cut art out of my life because it turns out that the person behind it was a shithead. I I expect better of the people making this stuff. Be better people, please. I mean, at this point, I'm just like, I don't trust anybody not to be a worthless sack of shit anymore. I mean, yeah. So, like, you can tell me, oh, well, so and so's a worthless piece of shit. I'm like, yeah, that's, that tracks. I believe you. Well, yeah, especially anyone famous because they, they are rich and they have power and. Well, I mean, the old saying, absolute power corrupts absolutely, but a tiny bit of power corrupts entirely. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm, like, at a point now where you can tell me, oh, you know, that, you know, Iggy, Iggy's a total piece of shit. I'd be like, yeah, probably. No. No, not me. Well, I, you could tell me anyone was, and I'd be like, yeah, that tracks. Like, fuck it. Like, once you have a friend who's, you know, in prison for life for murder, and another friend who was a fucking pedophile, you, you just stop trusting anybody, so fuck it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what if, what if you heard that you yourself was the person? That was a piece of shit? Like, I. Yeah, like if, some, if, if someone brought allegations against you. I'd fucking buy it. <laughs> like, at this point, sure. 
Ah, oh, I guess I did Dutch oven the queen. Damn. Yeah. Didn't I forgot about that night in that hotel. All those yeah. many winters ago. Well, like, when Me Too first started, I thought, like, man, did I ever act like that? So I went back and looked back on my past relationships. I was like, oh, I think I did, like, do something horrible and reached out to the girl in question. And she was like, Andrew, no. I... Mm. The night we slept together, I came over to your house because I wanted to sleep with you. It was an ex-girlfriend. Sure. It's like, I wouldn't have come over if I wasn't wanting to sleep with you. Oh, yeah. Well, the, like, the, the the definition of harassment and assault um, has been expanded. And it's the thing is, it's not wrong. It's just that, like, n now that we have a better understanding of what really counts as assault and we understand why... Um, yeah. It can, I feel like that's the reason why there's so many people who are very against it is because they realize, like, shit, well, if if that's what is included, then that includes me, and only bad people assault, and I'm not a bad person, so that can't be true, and it just turns into this this circular logic. Well, that... for what, what happened with me was it was one of my exes, and I was like... Hey, you want to come over tonight? And, like, that was more or less code for, hey, you want to fool around tonight? Yeah. And she was like, no, I have a term paper due tomorrow. I really, or, you know, something like that. She had, you know, schoolwork for whatever class she was taking to do. And I was like, hey, you want to go on? She's like, no, I really should work on that. And I'm like, okay. And you can do that here. And she was like, okay. And so she got there and I was like, hey, you want to fool around? And she's like, no, I have homework. And I was like, uh, fine. And then I was like an hour later, like you want to pull around? She's like, mm, okay. And I was like, mm. looking back, I'm like, that was coercion. She was like, I wouldn't yeah. have come over if I didn't want to sleep with you that night. And I was like, oh. And like, as Maddie pointed out after I told her about that, she was like, yeah, communication is key. Like, you you, you need like some kind of little passphrase to like, you know, someone know. Like, no, I'm just playing hard to get tonight. Mm. Yeah, okay, okay. I... that's the thing, is the whole hard to get thing it has really messed with people's heads. And a lot of it is just stuff per perpetrated in, uh, in media by characters who are female written by male people yeah. that don't actually, like, know what they're saying. And it's, it's, yeah. it's frustrating. We were all taught very, very wrong by society. And I, I feel that a good majority of people made mistakes that they wouldn't have made had they been taught more empathy and more just general, like, good communication, healthy relationship shit. Like, so many of the relationships in history were incredibly unhealthy, but by the standards of the day were considered perfectly normal. And it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's pretty distressing. And we're still well, working on it, and we're still kind of a long way from it being an, an overall standard. And the part of the problem for me is you have to be blatant and, uh, like, you have to, like, spell it out for me, basically. Yeah. Because I do not pick up on social cues. Um, we were actually, before all this coronavirus shit started uh we were getting we we're gonna get me tested to see if i might be autistic because hmm. there's a lot of fucking evidence that i probably am and um so if you don't straight up say andrew that, you know like i told you about when i was in high school all these people were like oh man i flirted with you all the time and you never flirted back I didn't know because I don't pick that stuff up. I, I don't see it when it happens. So, like all these people supposedly flirting with me, I had no clue oh, because yeah. I can't read that in people. Like, I mean, I'm it, the same way. I, I've I've said things that I've real I've realized in retrospect. Like they really haunt me. Like I've done and said things that thinking back I'm like god that was like really callous and cruel in th that context but I just didn't know yeah. I didn't know how to react appropriately and I I, 
I feel really bad about it now, but that's you, always the thing. It's like in the out. moment, yeah. I just I do what comes naturally, and then I don't realize until later. It's like that was actually really really mean of me to say. Like, why yeah. would I do that? And I, I the thing is, I recognize that it's a mean thing when I think back on it. But yeah. it's like at that time. You don't realize you're doing it. Yeah. And um. Yeah, you know, and it wasn't that I wasn't interested in flirting with whoever it would have been. I genuinely didn't realize that's what they were doing. Yeah. Like, I genuinely cannot tell. If, if, if you hit on me, I will not know. You have to be like, Andrew, I'm flirting with you. Then I'll be like, oh, oh. Yeah. Because otherwise, I, I was that you're same way. Your breath. It, if, in for most of my life like I actively I remember there was a time when I was on like a bus and like uh, somebody just struck up a conversation with me and I didn't realize until way later that like oh like they actively asked for my phone number and I realized like later like oh they were like trying to make a connection and I totally like didn't get that I was like oh yeah it's fun Legend of Zelda haha <laughs> yeah I I and so, like, that's why Maddie is, like, very... And Maddie's actually the same as I am, which is probably why we've lasted for a decade. Oh, yeah, it certainly um, helps. Um, so she will, uh, you know... She knows that if she wants to, like, flirt with me, she's got to be... Like, we'll use voices for it. Mm. So if you hear us, like, use... That's, like, our cue to each other that... If we're, like, picking with each other, we'll use specific voices. Or if yeah. we're flirting, we'll use specific voices. That's a good and way that's... to do it. That's a, that's a good way to um, disambiguate it. Just ma make it very clear. So, like, if you watch uh, Alton Brown's Quarantine Kitchen that he's been doing with his wife for I've the last I, couple months... I need to catch up on it, but, uh, yeah, I, I've watched most of the early ones. So, uh, apparently a lot of people thought they were having marital troubles because they would, uh, snap at each other, like, a lot. I... And apparently that was not what that is. That was actually just how they, like, play. Oh, yeah, I mean, and they you had can to tell. That. Like, you can tell Alton Brown clearly is the kind of person who has, like, that sort of humor of yeah. just, like, like, a l very facetiously um uh rude kind of stuff yeah and so that's why they were like that mm. and the thing is if you did that with me and maddie we might not immediately pick up that that's what the other person is doing if we didn't do the voice yeah uh, with so, me and coco it's like we we argue a lot but, um, a part of it is just because, like, I'm very passionate about pretty much anything that I even remotely care about. And then, uh, like, I get from my mom that, uh, I am very, what's the term? I, I'm very argumentative, mainly because a thing I picked up from her is if someone starts, it is even, like, a little, um... Uh, what's the term? Not even necessarily aggressive, like, if uh, someone, like, disagrees in the slightest, just raise my voice a little bit. A li it's it's barely perceptible, but often that cues to people, oh, this is this is fight time, and it, they get louder, and I just start yeah. matching their energy, and it just spirals into more stuff, and so that even, there was a fucking night where me, Corey, and Coco we're all in here, and I was arguing that, like, the villain in the most recent season of, like, My Little Pony was, like, a bad example for kids, and, like, it was sending a really bad message, and, like, we- it was just a fucking screaming match between us about My Little Pony, and I was just like, you have to- you have to understand that if they show the kids who do that, kids- oh, but this adult over here, they didn't get punished the way this villain did. Ooh, but you- ooh. And it just, it um, went way out of control. Yeah. So here's something that people don't believe when I tell them this. 
Uh, next year, Maddie and I will have been together for a complete decade. Yeah, Mazel Tov. Uh, yeah, we've never had an argument. Not once. No. Wow, that's like, amazing. Like we've we've moved houses, you know, three times. We've uh, like decided to move across the country for our careers. Oh. No. Oh no. Gonna... Fuck. What? Oh fuck. I I hit um I put my controller down. <laughs> and my last quick oh, God, save. You, I'm going to re fucked. Oh, No no no. <laughs> I'm I'm going to I'm going to quick I'm going to Have you saved? I'm going to reset and I have yeah, saved recently. Saved I saved in game, so my Duh. save file should be further ahead. Hopefully. That's why I hit a quick save like every ten to fifteen minutes. God damn it! It was your idea to do the quick saves too. You son of a bitch. I save. I quick save like every ten to fifteen minutes. Fuck. Nope. Oh no. How far back? I mean, back to there. Back to when I fought the squid. So basically, all fucking day. <laughs> Fuck! Oh no! <laughs> this is the worst fucking thing that could have happened. This is the best thing that could have happened. Fuck! I'm a half hour from when I was gonna finish for the day. Oh. Fuck! That is so perfect. I was on to the next set. Oh god damn it! God. I'm so happy right now. I was like, I put my controller down, and it was in the same position. And I was like, oh, hi, glitch glitched out. That's not what it looked like. And I was like, wait, that's from back in that fight. Wait, my controller. For what it's worth. Fuck, do I have... Uh, you, in the future, you can uh, map that to your keyboard instead, so you're less likely to do that. Fuck, yeah, I'm gonna... Well, okay, I'm gonna map... I'm I'm gonna keep the quick save on the controller, but the quick uh, load I'll keep elsewhere. Yeah. God, that's so beautiful. God damn I'm it! I'm so happy. You you have to fight Yurinovich again. <laughs> yep. Oh god, that's what a third time because you died the first time. Something oh. like that. Yeah. Oh, that is so beautiful. This is the best moment of streaming we've ever fucking had. What the fuck? How do I... I... I could not be happier for you right now, Iggy. Why can't I... Oh. <sighs> Why wouldn't it let me change the quick load? What the fuck's going uh, on? Hold on. It might be because you've got it set to... Uh, oh, this emulator might not let you do controller and keyboard. Well, I'm not even trying to do that. I'm just trying to take it... I did just delete it. Oh. And it won't let me. Because mm. I just want to turn it off. Well, you could key or map it to, like, your touchpad. Are you using a PS4 controller? Yep, yep, there we go. You could key it, you can key it to your touchpad instead. Fuck. Well, I beat the squid at least. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. God, that's so good. That's so good. Shit, did I, I beat cannot... the squid? I mean, it looked like you were in the squid. Oh, uh, wait, wait, wait. Okay, I'm going to quick load back to where it was. Because when I reset it, it took me back to my save before the squid. But that's okay. I I just did a quick uh, load again. That's so good. I, I'm so, I, 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 I'm I feel so like mad. I laughed so hard. I feel like I just lost weight laughing at that. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That is so bad. That is the fucking best. You, you mick fucked up. God damn it. God. It's not even necessarily that far back. I mean, I was saying that I wanted to make sure that this would last through, so... I mean... Be careful what you fucking wish for. Yeah, I mean, you made it through the hardest uh, boss fight, and then had to do it again. God damn it. Oh god, that's making my stomach just gurgle with. Well, layers. I will do that boss fight. Are you going fight. back the long way? 
Uh, fuck, is there? Sh I don't remember, dude. It's did been so, it's been a full fucking. Did stream. you fight Johnny? Uh, let me did see. You, fight, you gotta fight Johnny, and then you can go out. Uh, there's a door in the back of his place. Right. Oh man, you know what we should do after uh, Origami King? Mm-hmm. Is the Yakuza series? Ooh, I don't know if I'm gonna. My computer will be able to handle that. It's on the PlayStation Four. Ooh. Just stream it to your PlayStation, or you can either a uh, fucking do remote play or use your Elgato. Hmm. Yes. The thing is, I don't have I mean, most have of them. You'll have to use a controller with a cord. You'll have to use a cord to connect your controller to the Mac. But... Right, but the thing is, I don't have most of them. And I'd rather go through games that I have first. Until... Um, we could sign you into my account. Mm, maybe. I have all of them. All seven. Digital copy. Right. So you could just sign into my account. And play them from that. Hold on, where's the fucking... Where's Johnny? You go past the room with the squid. Past the room with the squid. Yeah. You know, you keep going the same way you were going. Hmm. Oh, you have to do the password. Yeah, that's not hard. I mean, apparently it was the first time you did it. Well, yeah, because they do this weird thing where it, like, s s slips around. Uh-huh. It's not the correct You know where it says, it. like, letter 5, letter 6, so that you know which one you're doing? Well, they established a pattern and then broke the pattern. So, did yeah, my know? brain my brain works in patterns. Wow, I'm a fucking human being. Would have thought... Can't read numbers. I didn't bother Oof. looking at the numbers. They set up a pattern. Why would I continue to look at a pattern when I've already figured it out? I mean, that's human. That's human nature, brother. I mean, the numbers were right there for you. Hmm. Like, if there were a snake, they'd have bit you. All right. That's another idiom. Yeah. It's, uh, and if you don't know what that idiom means, say you lost your keys, but they were in a very obvious, like, right in front of you kind of place. Uh -huh. Or like, you, you can't find your glasses and they're on your head. Yeah. What you would say is, if it was a snake, it would have bit you. Because it's so close that it would have bitten you had it been a snake. Yes. I mean, that's and... one that just makes logical sense. If you know anything I mean, about snakes. A lot, of them, a lot of them make sense once you know the background of them. But, like, you don't get it otherwise. Like, it doesn't make sense in isolation. I guess that and one feels like, less like a cultural one, though. Because, like, while that is made by a specific culture, if another culture heard that, they, I feel like they could context that one out. I mean, you would think so with most of them, because you fucking grew up with it, and it's so obvious to you, but, like, I don't think it's because you're using words out of their usual context. Like, hmm. it's a phrase that you grew up with, so of course it makes sense, but if you didn't grow up with the phrase, it doesn't. Um... Mm. A lot of phrases are like that. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of, like, some... You know what? Let me Google some uh, foreign idioms. Sure. Pick a culture. Go pick one. Uh, Japanese. Yeah. Let's see. Japanese idioms. Well, I might know a few of these, so... Uh... Go with Russian. I don't know any Russian idioms. Russian idioms? Yeah. Well, let me start with Japanese. I'm just saying, I'll, I'll probably know a few of those, so this might not work as well. Alright, so I'll tell you the, the idiom, you tell me the meaning, alright? Yes. Ten men, ten colors. Uh... 
every everybody is different, so for ten different people, they'll all have a different understanding of something. Uh, similar to different strokes for different folks. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, wake from death and return to life. Uh... Probably like a thing you would say to someone who's like taking taking too long to wake up in the morning. Make a bad situation into a successful one. Mmm, so make, uh, turn those lemons into lemonade. Uh, pulling water to my own ranks, Patty. Uh, having my cake and eating it too, basically? Uh, no, to do or say things for your own benefit. Ooh, okay, so basically, like, talking yourself up. Yeah. Gotcha. Uh, here's one that requires context before the explanation, or before the uh, saying what it means. Go not on. seeing, not seeing is a flower. Say it again. Not seeing is a flower. Not seeing is a flower. Yeah, I don't know, that one's way too abstract for me. In Japan, flowers can be used to represent imagination, beauty, and sometimes politeness. In this case, the idiom means reality cannot compete with imagination. Oh. Okay. Um, ocean thousand, mountain thousand. I guess that the amount is, like, uh, something that is a universal sort of thing, like, in the mountains or in the ocean, it would be a thousand? No, it's a reference to a sly old person who's seen and done everything and can therefore handle any situation. Huh. Okay. Um. Drunken life, dreamy death. Ooh. Uh, probably a warning against alcoholism? No, it's a warning against daydreaming. Oh. Um, one life, one encounter. Hmm, like a chance encounter, I guess? Every encounter is a once-in-a-lifetime encounter. Sometimes yeah. used as a reminder to cherish every moment because you only experience it once. Ah, you gotta live every moment. Love every day. Because before sheep you know head, it, the precious time Sheep head, away. dog meat. Um... I'm gonna guess, like, something that, like, don't judge a gift horse by its mouth, like, it's gonna be it, something that looks good from one angle could look bad from another. No. It's yeah. false advertising, similar to advertising. Well, yeah, that's what, uh, okay, that's kind of what I meant. Um, no, it's just straight false advertising. That's, yeah, um, that's what I was trying to convey, but that's, that is a more succinct way for it. Um, beautiful person, thin life. Beautiful person, thin life. Um, I'm gonna guess that it's like... Fuck, like, if you focus too much on your looks, then you will end up not having as good of a life. No, it's, uh, more superstition than anything else. Uh, means a beautiful woman is destined to... Destined to die young. Oh. So thin, like, short. Yeah. Um. Mm. Let's see. Russian idioms. Let's see, like, these should, these sound like they would be self-explanatory, but you've not gotten any of them. No, I've you gotten, I've got gotten more than half of them at this point. I've, I'd say I've gotten about three quarters. Uh, Okay. Let's see. Like, I might not have gotten the exact wording, but I did get the general concept. All right, let's go with Russian then. Yeah. A little more similar to Western, uh... And... I can't read Russian. Put it in English. Yeah, what the fuck? There's no truth in standing on your feet. Uh, oh. That's a tricky one. Um, there's no truth in standing on your feet. Uh, 
something about overworking yourself? No, you're just inviting someone to have a seat and make themselves at home. Oh, so it's like take a load off. Yeah. Uh, the hands slash arms don't reach. Hmm. Um. It's outside of my power. Be more specific, because you might have it. Like... Uh, the situation is outside of my control? Like, you physically cannot do something? Yeah. Like, oh, I cannot lift that heavy thing, specifically, or something Either. Else? Like, either I the literal... I this the physic situation is physically out of my control or mentally anything. No, it just means I don't have time for this. Mmm. Uh, uh, make a notch on your nose. Make a not like a chip on your shoulder. No. Take notice of what I'm saying and drill it into your memory. Uh, like don't forget what I said. Yeah. Uh. Keep your tail up with a gun. Uh, don't look scared and defend yourself. No. No? It's more like go break a leg. It's something you yell as encouragement. Oh, more like, uh, like, uh, like, uh, go in there fighting. I mean, yeah. Stiff up a lip, boys. Without a czar in the head. My fucking controller keeps dying. I'm gonna see if I can get it to go another couple minutes here. I don't want to have to uh, grab another one this close to the end of the stream. Nope, yep, it's dead. Okay, hold on a sec. Uh, well... Uh, I could probably call it there, but uh, let's let's finish up these idioms real quick, and then we'll call it. All right, without a czar in the head. Like, uh, no lights on in the attic. So, um, mentally checked out. Yeah, that's what that means. The subject of this comment is mindless or brainless. Yeah. Um, Go I ahead. will show you where the lobsters spend the winter. Is that a threat? It is. Yeah, it's like sleep with the fishes. Yeah. Ha <laughs> ha. When the lobster whistles on the mountain. Okay. I'm I'm a, I'd I'm like a one for they two They really here. like lobsters. Uh, so your next one is when the lobster whistles on the mountain. Hmm. When pigs fly, basically. Yes! You ah. actually got that one. Uh, here's where the dog is buried. <laughs> uh, is it like let's bury the hatchet kind of thing? No. Hmm. This is the root of the call, uh, problem. Oh, okay. Tree sticks. <laughs> what? Tree sticks. Tree sticks. Uh-huh. Uh, I'll give you a hint. You can also use pancake. Is it like a slang term? Um, kind of. Hmm. I have no idea. That one's too brief. Uh, both are softer versions of curse words, like yelling shoot or crap. Oh, barnacles. Kill the worm. Um. You'll never get this one. Like, destroy the root of an idea. No, to satisfy your hunger. Oh, what is the Sh worm? I'm guessing uh, an intestinal worm. Uh, this is really gross. Shove it under the collar. Shove it under the collar. This is the last one, so if you get this he one... Like, keep it secret. Keep it under your hat, kind of thing. So, shove it under the collar. If you get this one right, I will consider you have gotten them all right. If you get this one wrong, you got all of them wrong. 
Fine. I, like I said, like keep it under your hat. Keep it a secret. Don't tell anybody. No, it means to get really drunk. God damn it. Uh, like so, that's like tying one on. Mm. Yeah. So. Yep, I failed see, fully. That's the only one that matters. I mean, I already, yep. I made a bigger <laughs> failure in this stream. I feel like an idiot. I'm, I'm not that far behind. I can this catch up. Stream ever. I can catch yeah, up. So. But uh, yeah. Um, that is hilarious. I'm still. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna see where I'm at after three hours on Tuesday, because this I'm taking. Your, I'm uh, taking tomorrow off. Kids moment. I'm taking tomorrow off. And so mm -hmm. coming back on Tuesday, I'll start with three hours, and if I feel like I'm making good progress, I will. Sh I will do the next one Thursday. If not, I will go for another hour and then finish up on Thursday. But yeah, man, that was that was a bonehead move right there. So Remember I feel like when an idiot. Aaron, when Aaron had the Ross shot on Battle Kids and hit end instead of yeah. continue. He almost that did that sure. in Sonic and the Black Knight, because there was this one bit of thing that, like, you had six minutes to finish the level, and he kept failing, and he was so mad, and at the end of it, he was like, I almost hit retry on accident. Yeah. God damn but... it, I actively thought, like, if I have quick load set to the controller, I might bump it on accident, but I didn't think about putting on my fucking leg, god damn it. I would a, a fucking... map it to your touchpad so you're less likely to accidentally bump it. I'm a ruddy numpty. That, no one is disagreeing with you on that. I'm just, I'm going to take the quick save, the quick load off until I need it again. I mean... Something. I don't know. It's mapped to the touchpad, so yeah, that'll be easier. All right, uh, well... I think the place where you were about to be... You would want to use it. Uh, yeah, I suppose. But well, now that, that I know, now that I know what I need to do for the next bit, I should be fine. There was just so many, like, there was so much grinding out in the field. God damn it! All right, well, mm. I got back to where I started this session, so. <sighs> Thank you to everybody. So good. Thanks to everybody for watching. Whether you're watching now, before, or in the future with the past broadcast tab. Or the YouTube archive, which you can find down below the stream on the browser version. You can also find my personal YouTube. And you can find the Twitter, where I tweet out when I'm going live. Uh, as well as the schedule, which I'm going to adjust a little bit right after I finish this. And yeah, please, if you haven't, consider following because it helps the channel out a lot. Once I hit 50, I'll be an affiliate. And that means we can do some real interesting things. Andrew, any last words? Don't drop your controllers on your legs, folks. I placed it on my leg. I actively, I just rested it there. Oh, it was just enough because no. it was the fuck. It was the L trigger. It was the mm -hmm. L, the L two. Hold on, which has we a need little to go about five more minutes because of this. What? Oh no! What? No! I'm sending it to you on Twitter. Just pull it up on Twitter so that we can discuss for the next five minutes and just go, oh, no, at each other. Oh, no. Oh, God. Okay. For those who uh, didn't click the link, it is Cap'n Crunch's Ocean Blue Artificially Maple Flavored Syrup. It is a maple... It is a classic pancake syrup that is bright blue. With the captain smiling out at you. Oh god, it looks like drain cleaner. It looks like just pure corn syrup. Well, yeah, that's the thing is that most of those syrups are just corn syrup with a little bit of maple flavoring. But yeah. uh, if, if you want a good one, you make sure you check that it's good Vermont maple syrup. And it's going to be a lot more expensive. A little jug costs like five bucks, but let me tell you, it'll last... And it will taste a thousand times better. So it's it's certainly worth it. And yeah, don't don't get this trash. Whatever the hell this is. Iggy, I think we we have to do it so they don't have to. I don't know if I'm even gonna be able to find it. Oh, you live in the south. Of course you will find it. I mean, I'll keep an eye out. 
I'll keep an eye out for him, but... I'm doing the grocery shopping tomorrow. If I find it, I'll get it. Next time, I, next, I will add it to my grocery list right now. The thing is, I already hate any of these artificial syrups, so it being blue is not going to make it any more or less appealing to me. I, if I see it, I will buy it. I will try it on camera and send you the video so we can open the next episode with it. Yeah. I, All right, Captain Crunch I syrup. Will oh my god. Look, am I saying that right? A hundred calories per serving? Yeah, but the serving's like a teaspoon. Yeah, that's still a lot of calories. The thing that fucks me up is there's a pat of butter in it on the picture. Just drizzled, oh. a pat of butter drizzled with this blue goo. That looks, God. that actively looks like some Tide Pods level shit. It looks like something you would have gotten in the mid 90s. Yeah, like when, when they had the, the colored ketchup. I think that was yeah. a little later, but they had like the purple ketchup and the green ketchup. Yeah, and like the thing, like even the like art on it looks like 90s era, like. Looks like Crest for Kids toothpaste art. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. God. All right. Well, with that nightmare in your heads, folks, same same nonsense I said before. Thanks for watching. Go check out all the different links. Follow if you haven't. Andrew, I'm going to consider that your final words. We're, we're done here tonight. My last words are, oh, no. Oh, no. Thanks for oh, watching, everybody. No. <laughs> Good night.